Welcome to the Independent Characters, episode 149. This is Carl. This is Adon. And this is Justin. Wow, the whole whole group is here this Yay. time. The Trinity. Justin. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I, we have our own I apologize, box. guys. No, don't, don't. Yeah, <laughs> our own triumvirate. <laughs> Yeah, but everyone's going to be buying us in multiples and trying yeah, to yeah, trade. Yeah, yeah, everyone wants to sell the Carl model. Probably, <laughs> he's worth uh, the most. No, he wants to. He's an ultramarine. Everybody's like, "Oh God, not an ultramarine." <laughs> Speaking of which, no, oh, it looks awesome. <clears throat> yeah, are we talking about Bobby G? Oh, dude. Yeah, I'm telling you, with the helmet, he looks awesome. Not a big fan. I got to see him in person. Yeah, I not a big person. fan of the face, but I saw a picture today taken by somebody at Warhammer World that took a picture of it. Yeah. And that honestly, that picture looked better than any picture I saw on White Dwarf. It was like, oh, oh, that's cool looking. You yeah, know? I There's, mean, not that I didn't think the White Dwarf ones were cool looking, but you know, it was it was a good picture. There was somebody in one of the sales things that already is uh, campaigning that he wants to buy the sword. Just the yeah, sword. I saw that. I saw. <laughs> I that, want yeah. to paint that cipher model. Yeah, that cipher model looks sick. so good. Grey Knight, man, I like Grey they Knight. all all three look yep, good. They look good. I've already pre-ordered. The Grey Knight, I was I was a little disappointed with. Oh. Like he's like he's well sculpted, but he's not like as as kind of raw as, as everything no, else that's been coming out is. He's a level three psyker. Yeah, but no, no, I mean like about how he looks. visually, oh, yeah, yeah, visually compared. I, I, like compa- I like it. And of course, maybe it's because you know before that you had Ineid come out and all this stuff. Which who yeah. would have thought you pronounced that Ineid? I, I was. Oh, is that how it's pronounced? It's actually yeah. The Y is an I, so it's hmm. you know Ivrain okay. and Ineid, hmm. but cool model. Yeah, he's just very. Different. Static. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I got two things to announce here. Uh, first is Geek Nation Tours. They're uh, minis in the UK tour uh, mm. in September. Go to geeknationtours.com for uh, details and information about how to sign up for this trip. It is incredible. Like you can see, it is a lengthy trip visiting multiple places that have to do with miniatures and wargaming. Mm-hmm. And of course, we go to Warhammer World. The Mecca. I'm going with them. It's going to be awesome. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention. Uh, before we launch into our interview with Kat and Caleb from CK Studios, because what's going to happen this episode is going to be a little bit different. We're going to go from the opening here right into an interview with Kat and Caleb about the airbrush class that we actually just came back from. Yep. We just came back from. That we yeah, just I thought about that literally. Joke on the way. I just recently took an airbrush class with Kat and Caleb at yeah. CK Studios. <laughs> yeah. Run that and ad for four you. years. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was actually what was funny was during the class when it was all quiet and everybody was doing the edge. Highlight. Once the brushes came out, it got real quiet. It got real quiet, and then somebody's like, "Man, it's really quiet." Yeah, I usually listen to podcasts. Carl, can you do something about yeah. that? And I go, "Well, let's leap right into hobby progress." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was perfect. Sure cracking up. It was perfect. Um, but uh, uh, geez, I lost my train of thought. So we're gonna launch right into uh, that interview, mm-hmm. and then immediately after that is our hobby progress section where you hear kind of what we thought of the class right. afterwards. Yeah. So I think it'll be interesting for you guys to hear. Um, however, I do need to announce a contest. And you can enter dun, this dun, contest dun, dun. by sending an email to contest at the independent characters.com. And this is the contest. Table War is sponsoring this contest. And all you have to do is send us your best picture taken being played on a table war mat, okay, between now and the end of April. So your best picture of a game you're playing on a table war mat should look stylish. It could be funny. It could be cool looking. It could have any effects you want on it. Don't alter the picture with like Photoshop effects, but like it could have, you know, smoke stacks that you use and that kind of stuff. You send that to us. We're going to pick the best picture at the end of April, and the winner will get a brand new macro mat set. So it'll be oh, the nice. full three macro mats plus the the stand and the clips and everything. And it's I love that product. So, so no added on pew pew <clears throat> effects? No, we don't like need that. lasers or anything right. like that. We just want your coolest picture Bill. on a fat mat from <laughs> yeah. Table War. And uh, and you could potentially win a macro mat set, but to contest at the independent characters dot com, not Correct. Carl, not a dot contest. contest. Yep. yep. Yes. And we will uh, we will have all the details for that information on our website as well as our Facebook page, so you can go there and see exactly what you need to do. Now, I got to tell you, uh, friends of ours are exempt from this; they cannot win. And we typically uh, declare those people who are friends of ours as people who have 
come over to our house and played or that we regularly play with at right. game yeah. stores. So it would be a little conflict. Yeah, those people are, are not eligible to win, but uh, it's an awesome contest. I want to thank Doug and Todd for providing such a great prize and a cool concept for a contest. So uh, so get those pictures into us uh, as soon as you want. And the other thing I would say is you can enter multiple times. You can mm-hmm. send us different pictures as you go. We're going to pick what we think is the coolest, funniest, silliest. And what email did they send that to? Uh, what was it again, Justin? Contests at the independent character. No, style. contest. <laughs> Singular. <laughs> it's late. We're tired. We're tired. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think we should just get right into the show. You guys got anything you want to say before we kind of jump in? I like lamps. All right. I like carpet. With <laughs> and with those words of wisdom, we are jumping right into uh, this interview with Kat and Caleb. We hope you enjoy Wargamma.com, where you can get resin terrain, craters, lakes, lava pools, and objectives, figure bases for all types of models, character models including battle wolf war mounts and spawn seeds, linked barricades, choose from one of six designs to suit the origins of your army, from Star Pharaoh, Spawn Hive, Mechanoid, Dark Ancients, Dreadelian Noble, and Chromag Scrapyard. Linked barricade sets include 12 large shields, which are 2 inches wide and 4 connecting walls. Cover nearly a 30-inch line. Sets also include a matching multi-gun turret. Wargamma.com. Alternative Battle Miniatures. All right, so we're starting things off a little differently this time. Mm -hmm. Normally, we'd launch into hobby progress at this point. But uh, since I have very... Two very special guests staying with me. Uh, I thought, Kat and Caleb, I want to talk to you about tomorrow and Sunday, which is the airbrushing class at CK Studios. Is Finally, we're going to. Mm-hmm. And what I wanted to do was talk a bit to you guys about that and about kind of our, our expectations uh, going into the class, what my kind of expectations are. Not, and that sounds like... This is I want to tell you what you're going to do. No, no. Uh, (laughs) But like kind of what I'm thinking I'm going to get out of it. Right. And then when we come back after this segment, Justin and Adon and I, all three of us are going to the class. We will have uh, a talk about what we got out of the class. And then it'd be a nice comparison over what we what we met. But before we get started, let's talk a little bit about CK Studios and what you guys are actually doing. Fantastic. So, what is it you're doing? What are you doing? Besides eating you candy in my microphone. Yeah, I know. <laughs> there's, there's not Mike and Ike's in the house at all. No. no. <laughs> I'm um, never present. So, CK Studios, we're... Um, man, it's, it's, <laughs> it's a little late, So, but that's all right. Um, we're, you know, our focus right now at CK Studios is increasing hobby awareness, kind okay. of increasing mm-hmm. the community. We work through... Hobby Hangout, obviously, um, and then CK Studios with the weekend, the weekenders training, like what we're doing this weekend with the airbrushing class yeah. or the figure painting class. Um, we do a lot of uh, instruction at conventions, yeah, um, a lot of online stuff, videos, um, tutorials, and then you know just the regular back and forth conversations that we have on the Facebook groups. Absolutely. Um, why don't you get a little bit closer think, to that mic there? Okay, I think we're fine. we're kind of filling in a gap too in the U.S. where there's not as um, there hasn't been a workshop presence for a long time, and there's never been the focus um, on specifically with the airbrush community. Yeah, and kind of really trying to um, help expand people in their experience with their hobby, and yeah. and the airbrush airbrushing can be very specifically be very intimidating for a lot of artists. Mm-hmm. And so I think um, quite we found that this is kind of giving people an opportunity to experience what they're doing in a new way. Okay. And we're we've there. It just wasn't out there and available to people unless you were someone who you were able to go to a convention. Mm-hmm. Airbrushing wasn't exactly present at a convention either, as far as classes go. That's fairly new, right? So this is this is something we've been able to kind of bring over into the hobby yeah. arena on it's, top of the other things that you know we're offering for training. Yeah, this specifically has been just an. 
very exciting experience for so many of the artists out there because it opens up their ability to do things beyond right. their, you know, sit and struggle through brushwork, brushwork, brushwork. Right. When you've got, what were you just talking about? 4,500 points of army to yeah. go through, you know, that, yeah. that, it, that it's, it's really making some of the transitions in some of the games that are coming, that are going on uh, Warhammer yeah. and the changes they've made. It's making it kind of more available to the artists to be able to make some of those transitions as well. So mm-hmm. it's been kind of, I think a fun experience that way is bringing, bringing the workshop experience to the artists. And it's fascinating that airbrushes in general are becoming way more common. Like even the, mm-hmm. from when I started this hobby, mm-hmm. uh, and even from the days where I was going to tournaments, like now, there's very few people I know that don't own an airbrush. I, I, it's actually become kind of when somebody's like, oh, I don't have an airbrush yet. I'm like, wow, wow. you don't, you know, really? uh, because it's just become so prevalent. Even if you're just as I did for a long time, just the base coating, like mm-hmm. I would never paint a tank with a brush <laughs> ever at this point. <laughs> you sure, know? And that, that's one of the weird things that kind of happened with this hobby. I mean, I know I'm late getting into this hobby, oh. but um you know, there's not a lot of cross, cross genre, I guess you would say. Yeah. Because like the, the miniature painters, the, you know, the tank builders and stuff like that, they've been using airbrushes for forever. The, sure. Yeah. The, the train guys, stuff like that. And there's never been really a cross, cross genre pollinization or whatever, I guess you would call it. You know, yeah. we never really accepted airbrushing. And I remember hearing stories about, uh, you know, some of the games days and the stigma that was on airbrushing. Yeah, I, I always and, thought that was really mm-hmm. funny. Actually. Yeah, there was a lot of people that were really against it. And really and truly, the, the airbrush is just another tool. It's a tool. It's, yeah. it's not going to replace the brush. Mm-hmm. Um, everything you're doing with the airbrush, you could perceivably do with the brush. It would just take a lot more time. Yeah. The airbrush is all about time saving. It's, yeah. it's about creating some techniques faster than you could with a brush. There's... There's nothing that I can do with the airbrush that I couldn't do with a brush. Okay. It would just take way longer. Okay. So mm-hmm. let's talk about the class in general. Now, the class mm-hmm. goes over two days. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, kind of, let me tell you kind of what my thinking is and what I want to get out of it. Your, let, let's start your there. Your expectations Maybe, of it? Yeah. Well, okay. What I want to get out of it is <clears throat> uh, all of my airbrush time has been self-taught mm-hmm. or seeing a few things online or uh, amongst just a couple friends, but none of them uh, until recently would I say were professional airbrush artists, right? Uh, I have a couple friends now, Colin, who did my Age of Sigmar army, uh, uh, Brian, who does the uh, the uh, Splinter Mind podcast. Like these are guys who've made money doing airbrush work mm-hmm. and they know the ins and outs of it. Um, but for me, it's been trial and error. Right. Mm -hmm. And what can I find online? So what I'm looking for is literally somebody to take me kind of through the even the basics where I'm like, am I cleaning this thing properly? Because Mm -hmm. I've run into problems where I've damaged airbrushes because they weren't cleaned properly or taken care of properly or, you know, uh, so now, okay, we've got the functionality and the maintenance of the airbrush down. Um, you know, am I using pressure correctly in my, Mm -hmm. in my, uh, compressor? Like I have a feeling probably not, you know, Mm -hmm. um, I've just recently started, Hey man, I should dial this down a little bit for this kind of effect that I'm going for this brush or that paint. Yeah. See, I'm so, uh, I'm open to kind of all of those things. And then what I'm honestly looking for is how do I get some of the striking looks that I saw people getting, uh, on so we're all painting a dreadnought, contemptor dreadnought. But the the striking looks that I'm seeing uh, people coming out of those classes with, like the shading and and everything, mm-hmm. and how how can I do that? And then what I'd love to do is take what I learn on that dreadnought and start applying it to vehicles or mm-hmm. applying it to mm-hmm. even just uh, you know my basic infantry guys. So that's what I'm hoping to come out of it with is is at the end. Uh, making sure I'm taking care of my equipment properly because I know I've wasted some money not taking care of it properly. (laughs) Mm -hmm. But also then um, how can I do more than just base coat or a little, the little bit of shading or blending that I am doing, or what are some techniques that allow me to do that faster? Because right now, uh, you know, if I change colors on an airbrush, 
this is an ordeal now. I've got to do this and I got to clean this out. And I've seen you <laughs> at Adepticon just like squirt, squirt. Okay, now I'm spraying this. And I'm like, but my thing ends up gumming up by that point. How are you doing that? So I'm very interested in mm-hmm. in those layers of it. Having a different relationship with your airbrush as a right. tool. And creating a different um, response from utilizing it. So you may you may have some very basic techniques down, mm-hmm. but we have a lot of students that come in that have literally never touched an airbrush before. Right. That walk out of there creating that same result that everybody else may have had five years experience using an mm-hmm. airbrush with. There's some very specific, I think, techniques that we train that you can carry across to almost any kind of project you're doing uh-huh. and literally almost formatting a different relationship with that tool yeah, and seeing it through a different um, lens, if you will. It's not just a base coating tool. It's not just a blow through a certain part of a project as fast as you can. It's actually learning how to use it or utilize it to create effects. Okay, And that's a big focus in our class is how can you take this this tool that creates a real fast response for you. You can get through base coating. You can base coat 20 you know, shock troops. You can get through right. that really quick with this. Or you can actually start creating art with it. Right. And so we're transcending that that and, and kind of eclipsing that. Um, it's just a real workhorse tool into, let's actually make this create yeah. some art yeah. out of the other side of it. But we also blend in the things that you need for a finishing that technique yeah so yes the airbrush is going to take you so far but once we get so far with the airbrush what do we need to do to end up with the the Mm. kind of result we're looking for i did notice you guys were doing some a little bit of freehand stuff like i was watching you guys when you were teaching in in texas you know you can't do everything with just a single tool right so yes you can probably with a regular brush but not the majority of people are not don't have that level or that skill set to do that with a brush. And so we, we end up utilizing, you'll be surprised at the things that we're actually using in class to come up with some of these effects. It's not just the airbrush. It's a bunch of fun stuff. Sure, and sure. It's, um, so it's a cross-pollinization of it. So it's also like, how, how does it fit into your larger repertoire of, of tools and techniques? Exactly. Yeah, it, I think one of the reasons I'm happy kind of going back through the beginning, mm-hmm. you know, getting professionally is, is, uh, and I, I kind of keep, uh, comparing it to when I went through basic training and they teach you to fire, like at the time it was M16, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you get all these guys who are like, I've been hunting all my life and I can fire this and I can fire that. And they're like, yeah, forget everything you know. Yep. And we're going to start from scratch. Exactly. And it was interesting because the drill instructors would always tell us, You know, the guys who end up being the best shots coming out of training are the guys who've never touched a rifle before because they learn Mm -hmm. the correct way to fire this thing. Mm -hmm. You know, that that's that's kind of a funny thing, because we've had a couple students that I I can think of our first class in D.C. and then our our class in Chicago, both the best red, in my opinion. Yeah. One of the best red knots that came out of both Both of those classes. classes were actually with one was from an artist who'd ne- or from a painter who'd never even touched an airbrush before. Uh-huh. Or the a other miniature. one or the other one, yeah, was from the wife of a of a of a, a gamer yeah. that came in and uh she'd oh. never even really painted a miniature before. She wasn't terribly interested in it. I should have I should have asked if Shell wanted to come to this class. And, and it is, thinking about- it's so fun for people who have never ever touched anything like that because yeah. they're coming in eyes wide open. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like going, it's like going and sitting through a finger painting class for the very first time. I mean, it's all joy and happy. They don't have the roadblocks, and so you have this kind of fresh, unfiltered mind. At, right. Sit down and make this thing create stuff for you. And what they come up with when they've never had to do it before, there's no roadblocks. Well, yeah, they have no preconceived exactly. Notions. And the art that comes out the other side of that, we sit and go, "Wow, you just did the best out of anybody in class because you don't have." You don't have those mental blocks. Right. You don't have an expectation here of yourself right, right, to right, create right. a certain type of result. Interesting. And we break well, through that. And we and it's not that we get bad results. I don't think we've ever had a no, bad and, one come and out of that. You know, one thing that really helped with, with the beat with the first time painters was they they weren't expecting to have spectacular results. Right. And and one thing that you're gonna learn, you're gonna learn it this weekend, is that your model is going to go through an ugly phase. Oh yeah, it mm-hmm. goes through the and ugly. it is going to look god awful. And sure. you're gonna be frustrated mm-hmm. and Most you're gonna be like, Man, day. this is not working. And 
it's at that point that you kind of kind of give over and go, okay, I'm just going to kind of follow what the instructor's doing and we're going to kind of learn from this. Yeah. And they're not expecting these grandiose results. Well, I'm and, expecting to be able to paint Golden Dean level when I come out of this, so. All right. <laughs> We need to charge more for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, You're really undercutting yourself. You know, it, <laughs> so my goal was when I started out with this class yeah. was um, I had that same frustration everybody had. I'm sure that everybody who's owned an airbrush, you get the airbrush out. You're all excited about it. You're like, oh, this is so awesome, man. I just dropped 250 300 right. 400 whatever. Dropped all this money, and this is going to be amazing. I've seen the results online. I watched like 15 videos. I'm ready. I'm ready. And you get that airbrush out and you start spraying. You're like, yeah, yeah. And then a little less, little less paint comes little out. Little less paint. Yeah. And then pretty soon it clogs. Yeah. And then psh, you got this big squirt of like mess on your model. You're like, oh, okay. I, I got dry tip. I got to clean it. And so you spend what? 45 minutes disassembling the airbrush, yeah. cleaning it all out. You're ready to go paint again. You paint for another five minutes. That's what I really want to avoid. Like, like yeah, the clogging can be a problem after an extended period of time. Sure, and that kind and, of thing. And, and that, for the most part, unless you're like some, I don't know, savant or something, yeah. <laughs> you're you're gonna run into. I of did, of course, of course, I did. You know that that was my issue, and it was very frustrating. And it was through a lot of a lot of practice and yeah. a lot of reading and a lot of kind of understanding and just working through those problems. I I developed some techniques that work. Okay. And so that's what the the initial part of the class is, is going to be about going through those techniques. Oh, that's so good. I'm are so these, excited about that. Right. Mm-hmm. And are these the end-all, beat-all techniques? No. There, there's like a million ways out there that you can do things. And the way I paint is not the same that... Of course not. ...that, you know, another artist will paint. So it's it's going to be taking what I can show you kind of with what you've already developed. Yeah. Um, you don't have to be a, a, a good airbrush artist to even get anything from this class mm-hmm. you can be bone stock never touch an airbrush and get decent results the more experience you have with the airbrush i think you're going to have a better experience with the class mm-hmm. um some of the stuff you might give or take especially think, on the first day i think some people are going to have to I, I know i'm ready to this but let let go of you know yep let go of things you you think you've been doing you have to come so that's in why fresh. i'm completely open to like a new mm-hmm. way and and I'm a big Good. proponent of of not necessarily just doing techniques that you're taught from somebody like mindlessly. Yeah. Um, I, I I take it as the different blending techniques that are out there. Yeah. Um. You know, you got two brush blending, you got wet blending, you've got you know loaded brush and all that stuff. If you just become very tunnel visioned and and you just take every artist and what they do and try to recreate what they're doing. Mm-hmm. You're, it, it's not going to fit you because every person is different yeah. and every person is going to develop and they, they have a different eye for things. So what I really encourage is to kind of take some of the techniques that I have and learn how to adapt them for you. And yeah. that's, that's the biggest bonus you're going to get in this weekend or over videos and stuff like that is yeah. they, that you're actually going to get to, to work with me and we can work through problems that you're having. I can see what's happening with your brush. Um, you know, I can see what's happening with the paint. I can, right. I can go through and, and right. check all that stuff. Yeah. Um, and, and that's what we developed this class for this yeah. class. I mean, you know, it, it does encompass a lot of the little techniques that I've taught in some of the little two hour classes here I'm and there so and stuff excited. like that. Like just you talking about it's getting me more excited yeah. about it. it it's going to be great. And then you're going to get introduced also <laughs> to a bunch of different materials, a different, different sure. techniques and stuff. We're not just going to shoot standard acrylic paints. We're going to use a lot of different techniques, a lot of different things to get results. And then right. I'm just going to show you guys my way of doing things. It's not necessarily the best way, like I said, but it's going to hopefully get you past those hurdles of the the tips and tricks. I think I think the thing about painting is there's no right way to do it, right? It's, exactly. it's your it's just different ways to do it. Uh when I painted my ultramarines before I put paint to brush, like I watched a bunch of different videos on how are different people painting these things and ultimately I kind of cobbled together I like what this guy does with this and then I like this part of this and this part of this. And my end result because I went in with a plan worked out well i have always considered myself a very paint by numbers kind of person Mm -hmm. um you know i can i can tend to replicate what i see fairly well unless it's some super advanced technique like israel did on horus i can't do horus but but i've been very comfortable but i'm I'm very much looking forward to 
you know, all these little things I think are going to help help tremendously. So mm -hmm. I know what Don is super excited about it. Too. Oh, right yeah. on. And, and you're going to be very pleased with the results because ultimately at the end of the class, what I want is is I want each student to do exactly what you were asking is I want each student to be able to take the techniques that we learned this weekend. Yeah. And not just be able to go back and paint another dreadnought. Right. I mean, I want you to right. worthless. I want you to be able to take these techniques and apply them to vehicles, to to apply them right. to a, an infantry size model, even apply them to a seventy five millimeter. Yeah. You know, these things will okay. interchange and they're they'll be usable across the board for for every aspect of our hobby. Very and cool. that's that's one of the exciting things for us too is we maintain our re a relationship with our previous students, mm -hmm. and some are more quiet than others, sure. but. The art that they share with us afterwards, they're applying the techniques and it's completely different than what we did in class as far as a model base goes. Right. But they're taking the theories and applying them is so exciting to watch and it's so exciting to see. Um, Jacob was one of those in the last, yeah. you know, just the, from this last class. He took everything from that and absolutely created a stunning piece of art from it and went in a different direction but used a lot of concepts on it. Sure, sure. And he can tell you what he used cool. and, and how that helped him grow. And so we get to maintain those relationships and then also help answer questions and help them take it in a different direction. It's not just take the class and drop off. Very cool. So, so one of the things also I want to touch on, because we just all went to dinner mm -hmm. uh, and, and uh, we were talking about kind of what your goals were with CK. Mm -hmm you know, studios and, and the thing that really appealed to me, because obviously with the show is, is your focus is really about how do we help the community and improve Absolutely. the community, meaning the gaming community. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, I really did appreciate that. Can you talk a little bit about the hobby hangout and well, sure. what that is exactly? So people Ab can maybe check that out. Absolutely. The hobby hangout is a community resource. Um, it's a group on Facebook. If you're, you know, if you're, if this is a new concept to any of your listeners and it's I should where, hope not because they're all on our Facebook page, right? <laughs> Did you know we have a Facebook page? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I might've heard that. <laughs> I, I think I heard some rumbling somewhere. <laughs> but the, the hobby hangout's a Facebook group page and, Don't um, you put that mic in, I can hear I know. I almost did. <laughs> I almost did. It was so close. I want to, I want to, oh. Now I feel better. Okay, now I can move on. Um, but with the Hobby Hangouts, kind of, it's a global focus. Yeah. And, you know, we've got admins that work literally around the clock. So I've, they're, there's someone there at all times, 24 seven to oh, cool. help administer to the community and, um, taking but, it. In a, what do you mean by that? Like what, how do they administer to the community? There's someone there to answer questions at all times regarding, regarding art, regarding, um, if they're actually trying to be involved in hangouts, which uh -huh. are based on the Google platform uh -huh. and where we get up to 10 artists at a time in a room and we all sit literally around the world and paint together and um, a lot of artists like um, Aaron shows up, Aaron Lovejoy shows up. He runs one on Monday nights mm -hmm. um, with Liz. Caleb regularly is in there doing um, tutorials and they're just free tutorials where we sit and we record for an hour and they're interactive. Mm -hmm. or, no, they're supposed to be an hour. They're usually two hours because you're very interactive and you're, you're playing to the community and letting them and ask right. questions during these sessions. Um, but it's a, literally a community resource and it's a sounding board a little bit different than a lot of the groups where people are just posting their art. Right. Um, right. This is a place where new and upcoming artists have a playing field with existing artists that have experience and they mm -hmm. can ask questions and resource. And it's um, a very accepting community. Yeah, I would, I would agree with you uh, that it is. I've joined twice mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, I mean, I'm actually a pretty outgoing guy I've been told and, but even so, you know, I mean, you approach nine new people in a room with a little bit of trepidation. I was like, oh, okay, so let's see what this is about. But everybody was super friendly yeah. and interested in sharing what they were doing. And I found it fascinating. Um, and, and so, you know, don't, I would say to people, don't be afraid to join it or check it out. Yeah. You know, it may not be for you, but you try it yeah. and, and see. So w they just go to where on Facebook? To get it's um, The Hobby Hangout is a Facebook group. Right. And it's a closed group. So we kind of vet the people that are going in okay. and joining so that we're not getting a lot of um, fluff in there, if you will. Yeah. Um, there's over 3,000 people in the group at this point, And they are a worldwide 
artist community group. So um, it's literally just a closed group called the Hobby Hangout okay. on Facebook. And, um, you know, it's it's kind of exciting. Adepticons stood up and noticed they've offered us a room yeah. at Adepticon, which is kind of unique I and exciting. I saw that you posted that. That is cool. Yeah. And so we'll be having a party there. And we're starting to kind of branch out to bring um, at events, bring the Hobby Hangout to events also Very so cool. that we can hang out and do art and bring the artist um to the forefront and let them sit and help the artists that are events too. So kind of branching out on the idea, the okay. community right. and expanding it. So you'll see us at events and online. You know, one thing I like about the hobby hangout is um, it's not necessarily just about, I'm going to go on the hobby hangout cause I need to learn how to do this or I need to learn how to do that. Or I right. want to, they have, what is it? Three, full-time groups that mm-hmm. are always running. Mm-hmm. It, so Three it's like, full-time it's like hobby, 24 hours. Hobby, if, yeah. if you understand hobby hangouts, usually like one person has to start it and then other people can join right. it. And then when everybody gets out of it, the group drops off and so it's Google closed. Hangout. Right. It's yeah. a Google hangout. Um, but with these, they're, they're constantly running. And, and so what the, the encouragement there is, is if you're just, you know, if you're just hanging out and you yeah. just, you want to hang out with like-minded people. Nobody right. likes sitting in their in their closet or their room or wherever they are hobbying, and you just paint by yourself, and you're painting miniatures. We? Well, mm-hmm. some of us do. Doug does. <laughs> some of us do. Um, <laughs> but you know, for the most part, it's it's fun to be social. It, it can it's be fun absolutely to, to hang out, and you don't. There, there's people that get on the hobby hangout, and they're not painting. They're not. Mm-hmm. They're not doing. It. They're they're just hanging out. They're, they're they, hobbyists, but they right want to the chat. They want to have fun, and that's what's real. That's what I like. Okay. Um, is I enjoy just hanging out and having the interactions. Um, and it's also not dominated by like the premier painters. And that's something that, mm-hmm. that you don't get at other groups. Because normally other groups, it's catering to, not necessarily, I shouldn't say catering, but it's usually the focus is a, a, a premier painter. Right. It, mm-hmm. it, it's their group. And right. you're going right. to listen to them and you're going to learn from them. And here, it, it's not about those premier painters. And so the nice thing is that the premier painters can get on and kind of relax and chill out too. Sure. Because they're, they they're not under to be, the pressure. Right. They're not under the pressure. Exactly. And they don't have to be on. And and so you never know who's going to pop in and hang out and stuff like that. It's fun. I enjoy it. I, I really enjoy the hangouts. It's nice and relaxing. And sometimes I'm just, I'm just dabbling through something or other times I'll have something in mind that I'm scheduled I'm going to do or right. I'll have a specific topic. And then it is kind of, a show that that hour, hour and a half, or whatever when we I'll do is, it. is focused on that technique or that right. tutorial I'm doing. Right. But then after that, it goes right back to the open forum system where we're all just sitting around chatting. Mm-hmm. So, um, very cool. It's really enjoyable. Very cool. Well, I got to tell you, I mean, I'm super excited for tomorrow. Good. Uh, it's, good, good. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm all packed up. I'm ready to go. Yay! So, uh, anything else you guys want to? ask me or anything you want to talk about before we go ahead and wrap up what's the first thing you're going to paint when you leave class oh after i leave class yeah what do you have in mind to do that's a good question uh i am probably going to work on more black legion nice in particular probably that uh fire raptor down there and you're going what direction again with your dreadnought? Because everybody black. gets to pick their own colors we don't pick it for black legion so it's going to be primarily blacks and Uh, highlights of that and then gold and silver on it so right on which to be honest like is (laughs) like it took me a long time to come around because i'm like hey it's gold and black and silver it's you know black is not easy to paint black is not as easy to paint as i would have thought uh uh, when i got started but um the reality is when you see a whole army like that that looks impressive Uh you know when it's one model you're Okay. Okay. Yeah, but, but we'll see how my model looks tomorrow. We'll, we're, we'll show you some techniques. Yeah. That that will make one model look good. And I think that uh, painting, yeah. as you said, painting black is is tricky. Uh, so I'm definitely looking for what right can on. help that. It's one of those colors that people think they can just sit down and paint, and you go to do it, and it's like, um, yeah. I don't know. You know, most um, people I talk to, they struggle. There's two colors oh, yeah. that people struggle with. White, black and white. And, black. and then yellow. And <laughs> yellow. Ye- yellow, yellow is so... <laughs> you're you're going to cry when you see how pitifully easy. Yellow. And he oh, is you know such so, a... He is such, Caleb is such a master with yellow. So and that's a really... I, I'm going to love to see that because... Literal master My dream army, to quite frankly, do is Howling Griffins. 
And okay. you should you then, should do then, bring two I, bottles. I've been super afraid. I, I think we're gonna do. You a need Howling to do Griffin a yellow, okay, and you should, you should bring two models so you bring, can. I can I'll, I'll, I'll do. Touch yellow. I will do a Howling Griffin dread as my example no, dread tomorrow. Yeah, but let him play with it too, because the guys <laughs> right, that we'll talk about. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Because I gotta learn how to paint black, but man, I'd love to learn how to paint. If the you yellow, yellow will will rock your world when you figure it out. They're all honestly, they're all the same. My first army was a quartered they're army. exactly the same but right. completely it different was, it was a purple and a beige um like a bone white right and uh i really liked the color scheme like it came really good so i was i was actually a lot of people say oh it's so hard to you know paint the quarter like get the lines i was like that wasn't the issue my concern is the like right now how i paint red would not work on the yellow and so then how do i how do I paint yellow mm-hmm. or do I paint yellow first and then do the red over? But, you know, and like I've seen a lot of tutorials for like, how do you paint? They get that nice imperial fist yellow mm-hmm. and they're like, oh, you know, I do this wash on this model. I'm like, great. Now do that on a vehicle mm-hmm. because that's a whole different ball game in my mind. You know, a big flat surface is a lot different than a space marine with a bunch of. Mm-hmm. You're looking at me like, mm-hmm. no, I'm wrong. No, I'm no, gonna, no, no. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at you that way because. Those I, are the things I struggle with the same things. Yeah. I, I you yeah. know, all, all of us painters, we had to learn somewhere. Sure. We had to learn techniques. Um, the ones that I struggled with was I struggled a lot with black. Mm-hmm. I struggled a lot with white. It took me a, quite a while to figure out a good way to paint white. Um, white is can, difficult. Can I ask if you do? Cause, so I've been watching a lot of people paint white lately. And the thing that I've kind of noticed is a. Um, it, what I, if I were going to approach white at this point, it would be like a very light gray, and then highlighting the whites over that. For for me, well, well, ultimately that what's happening is you can't you can't paint white with white, right? Because once you get your maximum highlight, you have nowhere else to go. Right, right. So white can't be white. But what people run into, what's per, it's more perceived white. It, you're right? going to have perceived white. But even when you understand that and you have the values of you know we're just talking tonal values. Yeah, yeah. Because white is just a tonal value of a gray. Okay. Black is just a tonal value of a gray. Oh, interesting. Right? Okay. It's the darkest. It's the darkest gray is black. Right. The brightest white. The brightest gray is white. Right. right. It's a tonal value. So we're talking tonal values. Oh, that's. But, a, I never thought about it that but way. But the, the problem scale, that happens from white to black blew my mind. Gray right. is in the middle. <laughs> well, but the problem that happens is 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 even if you understand those tonal values, yeah, white is not white. Right. And black is not black. You can't just paint grays to create black models. And you can't just paint whites and tonal variations of white to cre- to paint white. Interesting. Because it's going to look like you primed a model white. Okay. Even if you have the, the grays in there, it's still going to look very flat. You have to create realism in life. And so that's what we're going to work on. Oh, man, I can't wait to see Is, is right. to, to create. You should do a Howling Griffin's Dreadnought tomorrow. And then I'll buy it from you at the end of the class. I, 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 I think I'm going to do that. Because every every class, I, I paint a different Dreadnought. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I did a... I world, saw some that you had laying out. Yeah, when I, we I did a World Eaters. Up. This last class, I did a Blood Angels. That World Eater one looks sick, dude. Mm-hmm. It, it was fun. It was fun. And that was white. Super, super. Yes, because I had students at that class that kept asking about white. Oh, interesting. We we actually had, I think, in that class, we had six, yeah, six so students that decided to white. paint white. Oh, man. Very fun. And I have... I have a couple of my little trade secrets that we'll share. That's okay, gonna. Cool. It, you, it's so obnoxiously easy. You're just gonna shake oh, your head. Oh, well, that's you're, great. You're, that's you're what I want to hear. Your head. That's what I, I want to hear. Painting yellow, it's obnoxiously easy. Okay, good. Um, but it's yellow is one of those things that stays ugly for a until it's very, not. very that, that long is, time. Until it is right. like, oh my god, good. Yeah, yeah. Some <laughs> some models will look really good right off the bat. And and I mean, yeah. within ten minutes of them putting paint on it, you're like, dude, that's a really good looking model. And then you're looking at some of the other ones, you're going, oh, that, that is terrible. hideous. Yeah, but I mean, there, how many times have I painted something where I've been like, I, you know, okay, this is what I'm envisioning in my head, and I do this color, and then I do that color, and I do the next color, and I'm like, this is not looking good at all. <laughs> and then I'm like, okay, well, you know, and then I highlight my final color. I'm like, oh, okay, it looks good now, right? I mean, it's so that's, interesting that. Mm-hmm. Really, that's what you're going to see on in this oh, entire so class. All right. The the models come Sunday afternoon. All right. All of a sudden, they change. All right. And and, and it energy. goes from it goes from some creations to uh, 
cool. to God. some masterpieces. Yeah. Um, all right. And well, the energy, you know the energy in the classroom on sat on Sunday probably picks up. <laughs> oh, S- Sunday morning is a little rough. Yeah. Sunday morning, every, everybody gets yeah. to come back in with fresh eyes to look at the model they've been struggling like, oh. with the night before. It is usually a little, a little rough on how, Sunday how, morning. So we're going from ten a.m. to to what time? Uh, Saturday. Um, it's. Six, six or seven. seven. We, we, the workshop it, is 16 to 18 hours okay, worth of yeah, hands-on okay. training. Man, I'm so excited about this. This is going to be awesome. Yeah. All right. Okay, well, you know, we'll see how Justin and Don and I do <laughs> when we come back. Uh, we'll launch into hobby progress Yay. and you'll hear how we did. So Yay. It'll, it'll be cool. It'll be and, cool. You'll, and will you be posting pictures of your, oh, of the your whole, dreads? Oh, the whole, on by, your, by this on your point, Facebook people page? have already seen the pictures of the dreads on the Facebook I know. I'm, I'm like, but of course we will. You know me. I'll be filming I'm gonna all of you. I'm going to take pictures all during class. I too. will. I'll so. put, I'll have you plastered all over you the gotta world. You got to get me from my good side. I try to. That's any side. I try to. I have about a thousand <laughs> pictures in every class that I take, and I try and only post the good ones. So. All right. Well, guys, thanks so much. I really do appreciate Thank it. I'm you. looking forward to this. I think it's going to be a great class. And uh, and then you guys are going to be at Adepticon, and I'm going to be at Adepticon. Yes. So it should yes. be a good time. It All right. We'll talk soon. All right. KR Multicase, the complete storage and transport system. My dad says it's the best way to keep his model safe and secure. It is. You can shop online from krmulticase.com for the most comprehensive range of trays, cases, and accessories for tabletop wargaming. You can choose from a wide range of core trays for troops, vehicles, and monsters. Or choose KR Custom Cut trays for specific models. What does that mean? It means you can use the KR Custom Tray Creator to define your own personal trays for your army and use the Tray Selector app to help fill your case. Are those the cardboard boxes filled with the soft blue film that Daddy has all over his game room? They are! KR has the most efficient designs for transporting wargaming miniatures. You can carry 228 millimeter figures in a standard size KR multi-case for only £21.99 in the UK and $38.99 overseas. That includes shipping costs. KR multi-case is the only fully stackable system and the modular design enables gamers to easily swap between cases and trays to suit their gaming needs. You can choose double, triple or quadruple aluminum or Kaiser cases for your larger armies. My dad has a KR backpack that his trays fit into also. It makes carrying his army super easy. KR, soft foam to protect your figures, hard cases to protect the soft foam. All right, so normally I'd say let's kick it off with some hobby progress, but uh, as you know, you've just heard uh, Caleb and Kat talking about CK Studios and the airbrush class. I'm sitting here with Don and Justin. Guys, thanks for coming over so late. (laughs) Yeah. We, I think we're all a little sleepy. We are all tired. We've just finished the second day of the class of, of the two day class, so it's sixteen hours of learning yeah. and painting. Yeah, it was two yeah. solid days. Yep. Yeah. So now that people have heard what Caleb and Cat were trying to impart on people, uh, and kind of what my expect or the audience has heard, what my kind of and I use the term expectations, but I think I meant more like what I hope to get out of the right. class was what. How do you guys feel the class was? Do you want to start with you, Justin? You're, honestly, I think your dreadnought of the three of us, your dreadnought yeah. came out looking the best Fantastic. at the end of it. We all painted the same. But I cheated. We all painted a contemporary. <laughs> yeah, we all painted That's a we'll contemporary dreadnought. Everybody in the class did, right. so that everybody was kind of working from the same general type of model. Right. Right. I mean, there were some people who had the Forge World dreads, the nice ones like you did. But, yeah. But mo- a lot of them were just the Calth ones. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Actually, most of them were resin. Though uh, they were selling oh, you're the right. resin ones, because that's so. what they were selling. Yeah. Right. So, Justin, let's start with you. How do you think the class went from like day one? I, and we'll kind of have some back and forth. I won't let you go on forever, but yeah, I think it was fantastic. I mean, I learned a lot. I learned. I, I would say I think I learned more than I was expecting to learn. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, especially when it came to which we'll get more into with the the, the panel. Yeah. Differentiating. Yeah. That's well, and so. just the mechanics of how to clean and clear the brush and move from color to color. And I mean, that first day when we broke for lunch, I was like, man, I've already learned a lot of stuff. Right. Yeah. Yeah. For me, um, so let's start day one. Yeah. We talked about the airbrush itself, which I think we were all comfortable with pulling our airbrush apart yeah. and together. Yeah. Uh, Caleb had a system and, and, and also like the, the mixing of paint, 
the type of clearing of the airbrush, that kind of thing, I noticed I did a lot better with my airbrush following kind of his advice. I still ran into some with problems. With like the back feeding, like while things, you're using yeah. it. And, yeah. With yeah. some things like getting gunked up and that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. Like I had a lot less of that than I've had in the past. Yeah. Following kind of his techniques. What, uh, and, and so I would say for me, the first thing where I walked away and I was like, okay, that helped a lot was the paint mixing like prepping your paints for the airbrush which seems to be like the number one most important thing thinning them how, down how you prep them yeah more than i was like uh, really thin down yeah like even like i would usually go straight from vallejo air uh, you know little dropper bottles right. into my paint cup right which you can do, but he was doing it. But it Which, was, I, and I found myself doing that towards the end of the class. Do, but then he'd also mix in a little bit of water and mix yeah, it in up. the cup, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but also just the amount that he would put in there was very small. Yep. yep. And so I found that as I got, as I did that, and I started thinning those paints a lot more, like I had way less issues, hmm. way less, and I was getting the coverage still, right? Like understanding how much uh, pressure to to set the compressor to right. in comparison to the paint i'm using made a huge difference for me mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah you yeah. guys feel the same or well i mean for me it was um i have i'm still using the old crappy uh well it wasn't crappy it worked uh harbor freight compressor did everything so, it needed to do yeah well, i feel the same way because i was kind of down on my compressor yeah. and that was one of the things they went into it was like c- compressors kind of a compressor just yeah. use it and, and he, what he was saying is that most of the companies using the same chinese engine right in it. right uh but the the thing for me that I obviously need to do is I need to get an inline regulator to, so I can actually regulate the the pressure because on that on that, that baseline come with one. yeah on that baseline Harbor Freight when you can't okay and so I noticed that that was a problem for me like when we were right near the end when we were doing stuff with the inks and stuff like that it was I was pushing the stuff too hard right um, and so uh, that was helpful for me to just kind of understand the mechanics of the airbrush a little better yeah um, as it turns out mine was broken the brush itself oh really uh, I had to replace the nozzle and and a uh, needle. Oh, so that was the other mm. thing. Yeah. Uh th- that was a shocker to me was that, you know, with every airbrush I've bought, I got extra needles. Mm-hmm. I always thought they were just like different sizes, but the nozzle and needle are actually a pair. Yeah. Mm. And the so like, I and know yeah. that I have replaced a needle without replacing a nozzle and I'm like, "Oh, maybe those don't there there's it's such a fine-tuned instrument right. that doesn't fit correctly." Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so like, the the PSI the too. The PSI was really shocking with, you know, how low you could go. How low you can go and should go kind of for the most part. You got to yeah. kind of figure out what works for you. I was but definitely using too yeah. much. Oh, I was shooting before this like class. 30 to 40. Same, same. I was in the same boat. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And the, um, with the Sotars, they come with a 0. .20 and a 0. .30 mm-hmm. nozzle and needle. Yeah. And that's what you, so you, and you cannot, mix you're not supposed to mix the two. Yeah. So, and I knew that, but even if I were to buy like a new point two zero, yeah, I should replace the needle and the nozzle together. Mm. He said that's not necessarily as critical, but yeah, it's the best yeah. thing to do. Yeah. So, okay. So I think just the mechanics of the yeah. airbrush and its manipulation was eye-opening to me. And, and again, like I understood a lot of already what he was right. saying, mm-hmm. but for me, it was good to have somebody who really understands the in and outs of it. And you could ask questions and you could say, oh, you know, we started from probably even, you know, you... Uh, learned a lot of airbrushing with Brian, mm-hmm. but Brian probably didn't go over. Here's the mechanics of the airbrush, and here's you know this from the get go. He was like, load it up and let's paint. Right. Surprisingly, a lot of what Brian showed me that fateful day in the slaughter hut was pretty pretty bang on. Oh, cool. Yeah, it was. See, I've never had anybody walk me through like, here's how you thin your paints. Here's how you do this. Mm-hmm. Here's you know, I've always been like. As Caleb said, oh, you want to get it to like 2% milk, right? That's what everybody hears. What does that mean? Right. You know, uh, and then they start talking about, no, make it like breast milk. Like breast milk, yeah. (laughs) That was was a running joke. Exactly. Um, So I I found it, I found like I'd never had any of that tutorial. That was all learning myself. Mm -hmm. Well, what was really cool for me, I mean, just the way it came across is here's somebody who does this basically for a living. Yep. He's talking, you can tell he's talking from experience. It's not, theoretical it's not from a textbook he's basing it on the things he's actually experienced yeah. himself and so it, it, it came across better that to me that way i mean yeah. it's like oh yeah he knows exactly what he's talking he's about he's an authority yeah. figure in yeah. that area right yeah, yeah and and you would see i mean he'd just put like a little paint in his thing and then he'd be like Shh, okay and then go and do like this and you're like well he made that look easy it must yeah. be easy right oh it's it's not, not so easy <laughs> it's not that easy but at the same time i found myself especially at the end of 
today yeah. so much more confident. Oh, oh yeah. sure. Same so, and just, yeah. I mean, it's just like a well-oiled machine and, you know, yeah. oh, this is spring this, check that. This is doing this, let's look into that. Right. Yeah. And just keep it clean. The troubleshooting. The troubleshooting. Steps. Yeah. So, so it, go ahead. No, no, I was just going to say, I mean, he, uh, there was one exercise he was doing with the PSI and the density of the paint where he was, where he'd sprayed onto the little shiny card and, and he, you could see how it blew out the center of the line. Yeah. Telling you those could cards use were handy, yeah. To, yeah, yeah, to diagnose, were. so what we're talking about is they had these little like three by five or four by six, uh, kind of gloss, like a semi glossy kind of, yeah, kind of like what you used to hang out, hand out to, if you was a rave in town. You sure, know? T- tell used, us more about the raves. We used to call them Don. rave cards when I used to work at the university, but anyway, uh, uh but yeah, is that that kind of gloss to the strip clubs in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I wouldn't know about that, but you can't. How can you not? If you walk down the street, like ten people will try to hand you that stuff. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> so he has little hobby just that Elvio. Little <laughs> hobby tip: grab those wherever you go. Grab yeah, yeah, them yeah. and well, only perfect. the light colored ones because you need to be able to see what you're doing. But yeah, it was there. That was a really cool little tool. Yeah, that that I learned about that was kind of neat. Yeah, it was. It was very helpful. Yeah, going over the thickness and the the kind of viscosity of the paint, and you yep. know, hey, this is too thin. This is too thick. You yeah. know, I think sputtering was always my number one problem. Right. Ah, yeah. And and learning how to how to handle that with, through avoid, e- through yeah. E- yeah through P- either psi you know increasing or decreasing and it was just awesome. Yeah. Like w- once you get to that point with the brush where it's perfect. And it's yeah. coming out it's super out it's smooth, to. and it's work. It, it's amazing. It's a like, dream, yeah. So, uh, going beyond the like mechanics of the brush and how it worked, then mm-hmm. he went into. He talked a little color theory, but really yeah. didn't want to get too into de- in depth on that. But he really talked about light and shadows. Oh, and, and, big time! And yeah. his technique is really playing on the light and shadow yeah, stuff. How it draws your eye and where you where you want the people to look at on the model and stuff, and where you don't want them to look right. At. Right. right, but we went over different methods too. Yep. Um, I mean, this is a creative hobby we're in, and it's not like uh, everybody. Didn't there's one the same. way, right? Yeah, and even that. I mean, I look at my Eldar stuff that I've airbrushed, and I I would airbrush that very differently than I would right. blocky monkey Absolutely. vehicles. Absolutely. You know, so yeah. yeah, yeah. I think Eldar lend themselves really well oh. to a particular type of of paint the blending style. and stuff. But like it that. was interesting to see an imperial kind of blocky thing. Yeah painted in this style and then and we even talked about how would you do a rhino like this and and he kind of mapped that out and so i think now that i understand how to paint just a a box effectively right because that's really what a rhino right, is right right now i understand oh okay um it, it it makes it easier to to say well now i want to do a land raider or i want to do a flyer or i want yeah. to you know i mean it's all kind of the same and then and then it, it goes to infantry as well right, yeah, right. Yeah. you can still do the shoulder pads with the similar Idea well, it was just rounded. Yeah, the thing that that kind of resonated to me in terms of the technique was, and we talked, you talked about this before with Dave Paints' stuff, is that the bottom, the back and bottoms of the models don't really matter. don't really have much to them. No. And you had commented on that before, and he was saying exactly the same thing on the, especially on the back bottoms of the models. He doesn't do hardly anything. Just maybe a little lining, just a little, and that's it. little. Yeah, he left here the and feet there. basically. Yeah. Because like, he's unpainted. like, yeah. when you're playing with stuff on the table, that's not what you're looking at. You want people to look at the face. You want them to look at the gun. You want to draw the eye to the other stuff. And I, I was visualizing it, the it, stuff that Dave had done for you, and it's, it's the same idea. And it wasn't yeah. even about what you're looking at on the table. It's what you're looking at for the model right. itself. Right. I mean, yeah. whether it's on the table or not. Right. Um, I, yeah, I found that really interesting as well. And I learned a lot from that. And and I also learned a lot about white and black and painting white yeah. and white. Yeah, so black. we should, I guess, clarify. So... Carl, you did Black Legion. Yes. Uh, Adon did Gray Scars. <laughs> uh, and Griffins of Justice. Is oh, what I did. Griffins of Justice. And I did AKA the Gray Scars. I did the Emperor's Children. Shocking. So we had a, a nice little kind of mix of yeah the whole yeah. class actually. There was a really wide gambit of yeah, was. of different colors. And oh my god, he did that Howling Griffins Dreadnought. And he I just, think the whole class was like really that was so crazy. Really, Effectively, what he did was paint an Imperial Fist Dreadnought. And then masked taped it, it off, off masked yeah. it off, and then used the GW uh, glaze yeah. for red. That was amazing. And it basically kept most of the shading and everything that he had done underneath it. He had to touch up a little bit, but it was effectively done at that point, and it looked right. That beautiful. was crazy, yeah. It was su- he made it look super easy. And that, that I think for me, the biggest thing, too, overall, like taking a uh, overall look at the class, was just going from, okay, I'm going to paint this blue tank here, right. you know, and just block it. Right, like you could do that with a rattle can. 
right? Yes. You know, this class really focused on like just getting you way outside the box. I mean, well, even, you didn't get too far out of your box. <laughs> That's the ongoing joke in the class. That's going to be the new, yeah, the new. Because uh, you're, because Emperor's Children Purple looked very similar to your Eldar Purple. Yeah. It's purple's purple. It, purple's purple. Yeah. Purple and purple. It just really makes you look at things differently. It yeah. really does. Yeah. I completely agree with you. And and the interesting thing about that was after taking the class, I was, or at one point I took a break and I was out looking at the white dwarf on the shelf at Game Castle Mountain mm. View. Great issue, by the way. Yeah, I love it if it might have arrived. I know, so me far. too. So, uh, they, still, they still haven't sorted that out, no, huh? Okay. I'm, My I'm last gonna... one I got on time, but this one I didn't. Yeah. So uh, I... I was looking in the back at the like Golden Demon Awards stuff, right. and now I'm looking at it with a whole different eye. Right. You know, I have a friend that works in the video game industry, and he develops games and everything. And he can't look at a game without commenting on, "Oh, I see how they did this graphics, or I see how they yeah. did this effect." Yeah. That makes sense. And so, as I was looking at the magazine, I'm like, "Oh, I see what they've done here." Mm. You know, the fact that you're not spraying from the airbrush straight on to the model, but you're angles. allowing... Angles, I think, was a key word. Allowing yep. the cone yeah. of so spray to kind of hit areas and angle things to get different effects was mm-hmm. amazingly helpful. Yeah, and it, well, and it's interesting because, like, the guy who was sitting in the front row, Kyle, in the corner, yep. um, he brought... He had two dreads. He bought a second right. one and he was there, and basically he was doing... It, he was doing the same color on both of them, but he, they were just slightly different. You could tell he was kind of practicing as he went along yeah. using two dreads, and that was kind of a cool thing to do. Yeah. Um, I don't know. There was a couple times, Carl, where both you and I seemed like we were done with stuff before everybody else was, and I was thinking, man, I, I sh- maybe I should have brought a second dread, yeah. which means I would have had to find mine instead <laughs> of borrow yours. Um, but yeah, I mean, I thought that was it was a neat idea on his part. Yeah. To kind of, so he could, I don't know if he actually tried different things. They looked pretty similar when he yeah. finished. Probably just um, getting used to the getting motions. Getting used to the motions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, everybody left, I felt like everybody left with a nice looking model. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Like everybody. I mean, obviously there were some people who took to it a lot easier than others. And right. I think out of the three of us, Justin's like clearly shows. Yeah. Again, I think you chose a dynamic purple. I never would have thought to use. Like, I was so torn, like up until last minute, I, I just did not know what I wanted to do because yeah. I mean, my, my main focus right now is the Iron Warriors for 30k. Right. But I was like, man, this would just be boring to do, or would it? I don't know. I don't think so. I'll I have mean, to experiment look, with look it. At, uh, uh, Anthony did his, his oh, in gold, so, good. Yeah. so yeah. that he could get it for the, the custodes with the, the scale. Custodes. Apparently, the scale seventy five paints. I need to. I need to get they're these inks. things. Yeah, scale. I learned inks. a lot about. No, they're paints. They're paints too. Oh, they might make inks, but they're primarily. I learned a lot like, about some inks and paints. Today yeah, and, big yeah, time. Yeah, some that work really well. And apparently, some. the GW glazes are excellent. Uh, GW Error is really good too. That's what I used for most of mine. Oh, okay. And it was it was awesome. Yeah, yeah. Even Caleb, he loves it. Like we had gone to dinner the night before, and he was like, "Have you tried the new GW Error?" He goes, "I love them. They're amazing." Yeah. It, it, Doug had said that to us before too. Doug has told us that as well. You know, it, it was just, it was a fascinating class. I learned a lot. The other thing I learned is to not be like intimidated by the model once you've made progress. Right. Like one of the things the that I always you can't fix. get kind of freaked out about is like, well, I've, look, I've got this effect on there now. Oh, I don't want to mess this up because right. if I mess this up, I have to start all over. But he really also gave us techniques for fixing the areas that you made mistakes yeah. on. Yeah, he, he made sure to make that point that you can always go back. Yeah, and it's kind of a could, it's, it's like a game of light and darken, yep. light and darken, yep. and just and getting it just right. It's yeah. kind of like and, the table leg, you know, cutting off one table leg, then the other, trying to keep the table level and get it, except, getting that that. Except chi. your table never drops; it never right, gets right, lower. Right, 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 right. exactly. Right. Yep. I, I, to me, that was like hugely confidence building because if you screwed up, you were like, "Meh, I screwed up." Now I just do this and I fix that. And now I go back and I try yeah. it again. I mean, right. I even went so far as to try a freehand thing. I mean, it was like just 17 levels below what Justin did. Justin but, nailed that freehand. Oh, but yeah. You, but that's my, that's my bag, though, too. Like, I, I yeah. love that. That's the kind of stuff that I just like. I, I caught myself. I'm like, I need to move on. I could just sit here forever <laughs> and get this little Emperor's Children claw, like, just <laughs> perfect. Your dreadnought looks so good. It looked Thanks, really man. good. Well, that's it, how you were done. You really had posted good. some photos, some in-progress photos yeah. as we were going, and somebody commented on Justin's. Is that, is that, is that transition done with air, the airbrush or, the, or by brush? I said, that's error. And he was like, man, that blows my mind. It's it's not that hard. It, it like, was amazing it, to me how even somebody as as 
<laughs> all thumbs is me. I don't know how many times I was spilling. You made stuff good and dropping progress, things. dude. But I thought it looked good. I mean, yeah, was... I heard. I heard a couple little f bombs from uh, Adon was sitting right behind me, and I just heard king. And... <laughs> Beep. Everything okay back there, Don? <laughs> All thumbs. I never actually broke the model. So that, was, that was progress. And you know, shout out to everybody in the class too. Oh, like, yeah. I mean, uh, people ask good questions. The lad sitting next to me, Dev. This yeah. this guy was awesome, and he was really helping me. And if if something was sputtering, or hey, what do you think? What am I doing wrong here? Because to an extent, you don't want to keep keep asking questions, the same questions of the the instructors, I mean, right? There's only one of him, and there was, like there was only one of them. Yeah. Of us, yeah. And and they were patient. And I, there was times, especially when we got to weathering, where I just it was really hard for me to grasp that. Yeah. But yeah, just shout out to everybody in the class. If you had a question, we were all helping each other out. And yeah, it, it was, was great. Yeah, I think there was, was no ego. All it was, the ego was, was a, checked at the door. You know. Yeah. There was a yeah, little bit of it was a little bit tight in the room. Not it was. real bad. I almost ate it at one point trying to <laughs> trying to get out. <laughs> but uh, but I thought it was a good setup. Yeah, I mean, overall, I thought mm-hmm. it was a really good setup. Yeah. Um, and maybe sure. a little, a little bigger TV would be good. Yeah, yeah, bigger, yeah. Bigger, you could help him out with that. I could probably, I know a guy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, Matthew, who was sitting next to me, uh, did a really nice job on his Imperial Fist Dread, the, the yellow. Oh, it was beautiful. He did such, a, and it was the same the, kind of thing where he had kind of effect he did. He kind of screwed up a little his... bit, or he didn't. He wasn't happy with what he had done at one point, so he just went back using the techniques and fixed it yeah. and made it look the way he wanted to. And yeah, the what he did with the with the chipping. Yeah. It literally looked like the body of that model had had chunks in it. Yeah, yeah. Had, I mean, it, pitted. It, it was really that good. was much easier to do, I think, on the lighter models. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think you even struggle a little bit on the Emperor's Children is that purple, but the, even that's kind of dark. Yeah, and like I gave up on that piece. I was like, yeah, this is not going to happen on this black model for me. <laughs> and I mean, we we weren't doing the type of it, it basically is pluck foam. Yep. How you start out yeah. with, and and we weren't doing the simple like sponge okay, it. sponge it a couple colors and done. Yeah. No, you know, we was, would sponge it up. And then go in, and the idea is you're trying to make that paint look 3D. Like yeah. you can actually yep. see the light reflecting off the, the yep. as paint would chip. I mean, he, and he's it was, actually going in there and highlighting the undersides of the divots. Yeah. And it was amazing to me the level of detail. Yeah. But it, man, it popped. Amazing. It was amazing. Yeah. yeah. It was amazing. The guy, so is, the guy I, is really talented. I got to play around with that some more for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I've definitely, I mean, so <laughs> all joking aside, like I, I kept saying, I think this is hobby regress for me because now <laughs> my Black Legion, I got it. I got to start over. That for me was one of the biggest issues. Like once you get into the airbrush, but that's kind of a hobby issue where you're always improving on this journey. Yep. Yeah. And you're always looking back at your old stuff, going, "Oh, should I redo it?" Yeah. 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 I mean, I'm not gonna go back and like do my ultramarines, but I mean, I'm, the thing is, I'm not so far into the Black Legion that I can't like quickly. Cr- and the and the thing is, this is such a such a leap yeah. from one state to another state. It's such a huge like cliff change mm-hmm. that I felt like, you know, if I'm going to do it, now's the time to do it. Well, do you remember when we had the hobby day here and, and you and a couple other folks helped me with my yep. chapter? And you and I base coded probably 150, 200 Marines. Yeah. Hmm. But now knowing what we know now, yeah, I'm going to have to go and pull all those guys out and if nothing else, do some of the shading stuff. Yeah, especially the zenithal, you know, yeah. on Marines, yeah. hitting it with that real bright. Yeah, and so, I mean, I, that was actually bring up that zenithal thing, which was always a frustrating thing for me because I would, I the first time I tried to do pre-shading, and that led to the joke right. about post-shading, was I did all the pre-shading I was supposed to do correctly, and then blew it away with the airbrush. Yeah, with yeah the, you, because, because you went too heavy. The paint yep. was too thick, I yep. went too heavy. You know, and now that I see how it works, that's I'm a like, big thing with the airbrush is those gradual layers. You can't yeah. just you can't pull back on that throttle. You have to. It's almost like you're working with more air. You can, but you're going to get a very flat color, right? Yeah. Right. I mean, well, can. and even with the way that you were doing them before, if you had known the technique about how to go in and do use a highlight color and yep. a shade color and stuff, you still could have brought back some of that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no. Once you obliterate, <laughs> once you obliterate, I mean, you could have brought back the effect. Shading. <laughs> right. Yeah. You could have brought back the effect. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I kind of faked it yeah. until now. So, um, yeah, but I mean, how awesome would the Heldrake look painted like the Dreadnought I just did oh, you know, yeah. with the gray blues and, and everything to represent black? It was... And then still with the Sharpie? And over, he, over, over maybe. That? On on the Heldrake? Hell yes. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, Dan showed me the uh, the oil the oil gold he's been using. Yeah. The, oh, oh, yeah, you know... I that mean, was pretty wild. Maybe I, oh. I don't know. I have to give it a thought because I used a, a gold that... Anthony had right, and it was so and that, smooth. That, that was a scale seventy five. Yeah, that stuff went I on need to... so good. I was like, 
wow, I need to buy some of this. That and these. Uh, I mean, it had to go over a, another gold. It would not go directly over. Yeah, black the dollar rowney ink. Did you guys use the dollar yeah. rownies? Yeah, I did. My lord, I don't know that I'm going to use yeah. the ghost tints very. And that also for me, I, I had never really shot inks with the exception yeah. of the ghost tints, which I guess kind of are an ink in a way. But this stuff is just the the opaqueness of it, the, yeah. the purity of it was just a pleasure to work. I with. do, yeah. I do like the ghost tint stuff still. I, yeah. I mean, I think that's it what has I use on my place. Yeah, right. That's right. what I use on my assault cannon. It work turned out. Yeah, I mean, I did that on, like I said, my glaive. And I got all kinds of compliments on that glaive at LVO yeah. the yeah. year I brought it. People were like, oh, I thought that was really, like you had said, I thought that was really burnt metal. Yeah. metal. But now, see, I'm kind of curious. I want to try, because a lot of my Corsair Eldar, I did that magenta -y, you know, fade with the, yes. with the yeah. I kind of want to go back and try it with yes, that just to worst. see the difference, you know? Yeah. So for me, that glow effect is really for like big weapons. Like I don't want to put it on like every assault cannon, every LAS cannon. I was talking to shell about that at one point i'm like do you think i should do like all of my vehicles have that effect and i think when you do that it it's it's oversaturation of the effect it's like putting mind. it's like putting headlights in every single bike yes <laughs> <laughs> yes exactly like that sorry john see but i don't know i, think I haven't it, ever it, seen straight again after playing against <laughs> you one time <laughs> gotta wear your sunglasses Those leds are like oh. yeah um you know listen i i mean bottom line you think it was worth the money to go to the class, you paid. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, in a heartbeat. I want to go. They're talking about doing another one that's more like organic, yeah, kinda creature style. Oh, that I'm, would be cool. I'm I'm sold. Like I just feel I'm I, all I'm inspired right now. I'm motivated to like want to. Yeah, get the I genuinely air rush. feel like I could go to this class again, mm -hmm. like in six months, and still learn things from yeah. it, you know because look, sixteen hours, <laughs> two days of eight hour days. It was, a it was a lot. Yeah. yeah, it was a lot. And by it was, but like, man, when you left that room, when we're all done, it was just it, it just went by so fast. It really you did. Know? Today flew, yeah. but the last hour I was done. I started packing up. I'm like, I can't do anymore. Yeah, but I'm happy with my results. Oh yeah, I'm totally happy yep. with my results. And like I said, it was one of those things where, as the day progressed, and I was painting like i was like are you sure and he's like go lighter and i'm like but it's supposed to be black and he's like go lighter yeah yeah and, and i'm like okay i'm gonna just trust in your process here the, and the number of times i heard him walk around the room saying just trust me just do it yeah just do it because he was and they even told us at the end of day one you're, you're gonna think your dreadnought looks ugly yeah you know you're gonna say oh this is ugly just, no i think just stick with it fugly <laughs> was... just, just stick with it and it was you could you could almost see in day two you could almost see the light bulbs going on over people's heads yeah. as the, tying it all in together and that that uh, kind of that filtering thing that he did with the off color that yeah. makes absolutely no sense when you think about it but then when you do it it works perfectly. You talk the, the kicker, the, the under kicker, kicker color, yeah, yeah. So basically, that's for for the listeners. It's it's you're 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 adding really watered down paint, right? Like ninety percent. It looks water. like Kool Aid. Yeah, like, it looks like Kool Aid. Really watered down. Like, are you sure? And he's just like, Yeah, no, more Bitter. water. Yeah, more water. That was funny. More. I'm like, is this gonna do anything? And when you're actually spraying it on, it feels like you're doing nothing. Because right. all you do is as soon as you see it's wet, you stop. You stop right. and you yeah. move on. And then but you you're layering this up, layering and probably what, ten layers or so at least per yeah. little dark area. And it adds that little hint of color that yeah. you, you get that I think I did dance three. off things. It was I really it's cool. Still really subtle like oh it yeah was, it is on my model in particular it was like yeah. really hard but the to thing see. about it is is you're not supposed to register it no i know and so it's supposed to be i mean you were looking for it and you could see it kind of subtle but i i left it with just like three layers i think and when i look real close under the bright light i could see it but but i love it when you're looking at it on the table you you can't see it the concept being let's take black for example that yeah. black uh absorbs light right but it also reflects things around it a little bit. Like yes. right. some colors can't escape. When you're looking at something black, it actually has bits of the things around it in it, whether it's yeah, you know, next, browns or... Next time you're standing next to somebody who's wearing a black t-shirt in a bright room, recognize look, look it, at the shirt yeah. and it doesn't look like the same black all the way through the right. shirt. The shadows are what makes right. it black. Yeah. Right? And it's, so it's really capturing those areas that are not black. And you can still go, like you could bring it up as much as you want, really, because yeah. the picture he showed us, I mean, it was uh, like a uh, World Eaters Marine that was like being kind of thrown in the air. Yeah. And he had his white armor, right? But on like either side, kind of going down the model, he had one side that was yellowish yeah. and one side that was bluish and it looked brilliant. Yeah. yeah. And it's just probably stuff I wouldn't do for an army per se, but if you're doing a showpiece, mm. yeah. which yeah. a lot of the techniques, like, 
that we learned today, I don't foresee myself doing for my armies, to be honest with you. Yeah, no way. But if I wanted to take a model to that next level. I think I'm definitely going to do the shadowing and the bright. Absolutely. I mean, without a doubt, yeah. that was like the big takeaway. From absolutely. It. Am yeah. I going to do a kicker on everything? Eh, probably probably not. not. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, centerpiece model. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I'll, I'll probably do it. On, not, I'll right? probably do it on anything bigger than a Terminator. All right. Knock yourself out. Anything bigger than a Terminator. I mean, <laughs> it's the, not hard. I mean, it's not, no, it's not, it's not even that time consuming no. to do, to be honest with you. So, you know, but I just don't think the, the, uh, the payoff for the effort is really there on a grand scale. Nobody's going to see that on my table. Yeah. Nobody's going to see it. But anyway, so, you know, bottom line, uh, Kat and Caleb, thank you so much for, for amazing, doing the class. Amazing work. If you are interested in taking this class, I would say reach out to CK Studios. They were going to do one in April in Mountain View again. Um, they travel around the country doing this. So if you're looking for it in your area, you can reach out to them. But yeah. my... They were going to do another one in April, but it sounds like it's going to get delayed because right. that's really close to Adepticon right. and there's some other classes going on. So, But what I would say is this, because a lot of people were posting on our Facebook page and saying, well, I wish you would come to my area. I would say get in touch with them. Help round up people yeah, there you in go. your and set it up in your that area. are interested. Yep. Help them set it up. Yep. They don't know the people in your area. They didn't know the people in this area. They right. came to me. I got... You know, fortunately, because of the show, I could, you know, get the word out. But also we posted on several Facebook groups that were on. Yeah. Hey, this is what's going on. And people signed up. So, yep. you know, they, they don't need a huge amount of people there. But I think they need like 14 to 16 people or something like that. Yeah. So reach out to CK one. Studios on Facebook. Yep. Just search for CK Together Studios. CK Studios. I will put a link to that in the show notes. I will not put a link to all the various paints and inks and all right, that no. stuff. Yeah. Uh, but we're supposed to get provided that by cat at some right. point. And when I am provided that I will make a post, post on the, the links yeah. page about it. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, absolutely worth it. I was blown away and, yep. and worth every penny. Yeah, yep. for sure. And it fixed my airbrush. Yeah. <laughs> there you, there go. you go. <laughs> and I got some cool tools, like things yeah. I hadn't just like, yeah. just the Q-tips bottles. And the, yeah, the, little, the little makeup Q-tips. Yeah. And using, yeah. using alcohol, a little bit of alcohol and water. And so yeah. aside yeah. from the class, let's talk hobby progress. Justin, why don't you start? I've been all over the place, man. Yeah. So I missed the last episode. Right. My uh, my promise was to finish the jet bikes, and that definitely didn't happen. <laughs> because I'm sticking to my theme of just doing whatever the heck I want to do. You're, yep. you're in the so, Doug zone. I'm in the Doug zone. So I managed to play over the last couple weeks about four games of Age of Sigmar. Yep, that's right. Stayed up till like three in the morning last night playing... Like oh, Dan. You, oh, really? Did you really? Uh huh. And then you came in this morning. Uh huh. <laughs> oh, oh, that's why he's so. Beat. That's why when I was like, Carl, are we uh we're recording? Uh, yep. It's all good. I'm a trooper. Uh, yeah, you are. I'm here. So, are all you right. recording uh, the first episode of Lord and Heroes tomorrow? No, it'll just be called Leaders. <laughs> <laughs> leaders. Okay. Yeah, Kiefer's Kiefer's Leaders. Um, it's fun. I like. I know it's a 40k podcast, but uh, yeah, I had a lot of fun with that. So that got me inspired to. I think you're oh, so. Before you go on to what it inspired, so you, you said you're having fun with it. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? Because I we've been talking about Age of Sigmar a bit amongst yeah. us. Uh-huh. Do you see what I mean by like I'm actually looking forward to them implementing some of this stuff into 40k? Even before when I was really in my box, yeah, and <laughs> and uh, <laughs> when it first came out, I read the rules and I knew how the game played, and yeah. I watched all these podcasts. And even back then, when I was kind of poo pooing it. A lot of the rules I found were just great ideas, fantastic yeah, yeah, ideas, yeah, yeah. and after playing the game, even more so. Yeah, I mean, you can see where. Look, I, I don't think they should just straight up lift it and make it 40k, but no. you can see where incorporate. You, can go, you know what? There are lessons to be learned here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that we can incorporate in, and so it'll be very interesting. I'm like, I'm after playing. This is the thing. After playing Age of Sigmar, yeah. I am more excited about Eighth Edition coming out than I ever was. I absolutely agree with you. Well, and, and one of the things and I was, never thought I would hear you say that, Justin Kiefer, but I'm I'm excited to hear you say that. I'm excited that they came out with the General's Handbook. Yeah, I yeah. I you agree. Know, that's what excites me. Uh, <laughs> well, no, the, your, no, I was just gonna say that when I was talking to the the gentleman gentleman from uh, Games Workshop at Las Vegas Open, and they were talking to me about um, looking at. All of the uh, the games that are being played and the lists that are being used and using all the data of the events that they're running to help them with kind of 
you know, kind of fine tuning and thinking about what they can carry forward. He was talking about how they're going to be reissuing the general's handbook at a more regular rate. Yep, there is already planned. They're working they're on it working right yeah. now. Yeah, right. And but so I mean, it's only like twenty five, thirty bucks. Right. I mean, yeah. It's... Right. And so, uh, it, so it's very clear that they're thinking about things that they can fine tune and bring into the other game system, which they've been doing from fantasy to forty k. Of course, to the for, app. The forever. app. Have you used the app when you played? Yeah. Yeah. It's just amazing. Yeah. If 40K gets that, it's super simple and yeah. just, yeah. Yeah, super, I mean, it, you know, not to talk about Age of Sigmar, but, yeah. but I mean, the point is I'm talking about 40K learning from that. And, yeah. and it's so funny because I think there's so many people out there that go, oh, they're going to AOS, you know, 40K. It's going to be terrible. And I'm like, have you played Age of Sigmar? Mm-hmm. Like, seriously. And they're like, oh, yeah, it sucks. It's four pages. Okay, <laughs> whatever you say, buddy. Right. Because right. It's I'm more telling than four pages. you. It's. I think there's lessons to be learned there, and there's things that are going to be great. And and it's just. I found myself playing that game, and and having to discard the baggage of 40k when yeah. I was playing it. I'd be yeah. like, so I want to charge those guys, so they're in terrain. Do I have to like? Is exactly. there a minus? Or, yep. Nope. Just charge them. Okay. Oh, I'm in combat. Okay. I'm, I'm going to shoot you. Just you just do whatever you want. And yeah. It's just it's simple. It's liberating. It is liberating. Which is really. Weird. Get, well, it, it it plays a, phrase, fast. a phrase they use that I thought was very interesting is that there's people in the studio who feel that 40k has gotten so big it's basically being crushed under its own weight. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, that's the phrase they use. Yeah. Being crushed With, under its own weight. Without a doubt, I think. And so it's very funny. clear they want to clean things up and they want to make things. Well, it's good that they recognize that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. No, that's, that uh, it really struck me. Yeah. 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 So on anyway, that on to, that note, yeah. Problems. So after playing for whatever reason, I decided. To, well, actually, no. So hobby progress. Back to this. I got my uh, creature caster m- uh, models built. Yes. Three, three out of the four demons. Yes. I built awesome models. There's little more flashing on them than was advertised. Some gaps there, that needed filled. Some gaps, but that's to be expected. It's to be expected, and and hey, no worries. So what, I, what do you think of the Slaneshi one, which is kind of the one you were really? I love it. Yeah, I think it looks cool. It's awesome. I think it looks and cool. it's definitely going to be getting some airbrushing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, now it is. That's gonna be Ooh. awesome. This, I mean, I gotta tell you, like the the Zichian kind of one. Yeah. It's just, I just feel it's so overshadowed by the GW one yeah. at this point. If it had come out a year ago, that guy would have made a ton of money off that model. Yep. But as it stands right that, now, uh, I got that Nurgle one though, the Plague Angel. How is that one? So good. Is it? Because you know most Nurgle stuff's always like real bloated. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. This guy is like just emaciated and like gaunt. See, that's kind of cool. And like, that's just a that's, see, that's how I picture and, him on, uh, Mortarian anyway. I think you will be. Yeah. Very cool model. So. Um, I, I built them, and then I got all motivated for whatever reason to get back to my Slanesh stuff. Very and, and cool. Is, I wonder why. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, these are models that like are 15 years old or something that I you know built that long ago, and I'm yeah, going yeah. back and touching them up, and just been working on a bunch of demonettes and this, that, the other thing, and it's it's fun, cool, really cool. Yeah, to go I, back I'm on all that. telling you, like I coming off of this class, I'm more excited to play than ever, and and get some hobby done, but. I need, a, I need a break from painting just for a little oh, bit. Oh, and I took the plunge, too. I, I rebased some models. Yes. Oh, I, wow. I ripped, I ripped uh, 20 Chaos Warriors and a, a bunch of random guys off squares and put them on around. So oh. whew, I made the first step. It's not that bad. It's not that bad, it, the rebasing. It's not that bad. No. And I, I got to say, they, they look, look so better. good. They look so good. <laughs> they look so good, yeah. It's so, crazy. It's yep. crazy. What else? Is that, that, that all you got? Uh, little things here and there, yeah. But, but yeah, mostly just a lot of Slaneshi. Adon, how about you? Well, I was going to work on my... My palace grav tank that I was talking about last time, but I left it here yeah. after the episode. <laughs> You've got it now, so I have it now. But I, um, so in the uh, meantime, I received my uh, Cal- Caladius gra- grav tank, the middle sized uh, grav tank. These are four drilled models, four all for your custodes. custodes. Yeah, which I like. I need another army. Like I need a hole in the head. But they're, the models are so awesome. Yeah. Um. So I was working on that. You're powerless. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Like yoga pants. They are sick. Like, I had no intention of doing Custodes Army. Still not. But I have to admit, they are beautiful looking. Well, and my problem with doing them now is that just like, I think like so many people are going to be doing them. And what's so funny is that I was like, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. And then Mike Ramos on Barter Bucket is like, oh, I've got a couple more sprues of Custodes and Sisters of Silence. Fine. I'll take them. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, their dreadnoughts are the best looking. Those are very oh, cool. I know. Yeah, I've it's... already bought the one. I'm, I, I'm getting ready to order the other one. They're just sick looking. Yeah, yeah. just incredible. Um, so I did. I was working on the grav tank, you know, cleaning up all the things uh, and washing it and getting that all ready to go. I had to put together the contemptor dread. Yep. For um, the class, the plastic, right? Yeah, the plastic yeah. one. And uh, yeah, that was pretty much what I did hobby wise. Um, so getting ready for the class, it was. I was really interested in. Cool. Oh yeah, I had to do that as well. 
Well, I'm following Duncan's tutorial on the Lord of Change. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm about a quarter of the way through the tutorial at this point. Um, some effects I like, some I would have rather used an airbrush. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, I think uh, this one I'm going to... Kind of I'm, wings would just be like perfect for bringing them up. Yeah. And... To be honest, it's, it's not that bad. I mean, like doing Duncan's tutorials working oh, it does pretty, look good. pretty yeah. darn good. And uh, I still got a ways to go. But, uh, you know, I it's easy to follow. And I just really wanted to go through that whole process right. and validate it in my own head. I'm surprised um, you glued everything together instead of component. That's how he starts it. I'm following exactly his instructions. Okay, okay. In fact, he actually has his on the base, but I didn't want to put mine on the base yet. Uh, but it's a beautiful model. And yeah, uh, it really I'm is really enjoying it. So uh, doing that also class contempt or dread. I made good progress. Never would have expected to paint. And you have black you have the model nice that way. Sons of Horus one. Yeah. So my concept is I actually have two Sons of Horus contempt or dreadnoughts that I am using as uh, my Black Legion dreadnoughts. And I'm actually like naming them and right. like, every every unit and model in this army. I'm naming something and they're going to have like a history. And so like these guys are like old Sons of Horus that you know, a bad new. Right. And they're in these contemptor dreadnoughts. And that's, you know, why? Because they're contemptor dreadnoughts. So they're right. super ancient. Right. And, you know, they pal around with, you know, a yeah, they've outlived guys. their legion, basically. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, the markings and stuff are right. still there, but now black, you right. know, and pledging legions to a bad. So, um, so that, uh, I read a lot. I was on vacation, as you guys know, That's out right, in yeah. Hawaii. Uh, I've read uh, Karkaradon's Red Tithe, which is Space Sharks. Mm. Um, pretty good book. Yeah. Like, really, really enjoyable. Uh, took me a little bit by surprise. It's kind of winds up being Space Sharks versus Night Lords in this penal colony. Hmm. Uh, mm. And it's it's pretty cool. I mean, there's some pretty uh, good bolter porn in that in that <laughs> in that uh, that novel. Um, I also read Slaughter at Giant's Coffin, which is about the size of the emperor. Uh, and this was a book like I had really little interest in. Yeah. But when I read it, I was like, this is really, really good. I mean, even I got that like inkling like, huh, I wonder. Well, those uh -oh. are the you guys. Do this kind of chapter. But, uh oh. No, nah, I'm not. Those are the guys we talked about in the Tyranid episode. Yes. Yes. And it had had I only read this book before then, because the book actually starts out with them fl having fled the f Pharaohs. Right. Right, because they fall into the Tyranids, and right. Tyranids are still chasing. But there's also more than that. There's like some some uh, intrigue and stuff going on within the chapter itself. It's kind of cool. So um, <clears throat> then, the last thing I want to talk about is uh, the barter and buy that I've set up yeah. for our group. Saw that. So here's the thing: <laughs> no I've, buying. I've been looking for uh, a commission painter for Shell's Night Lords army, mm -hmm. and I kind of narrowed it down to a couple people at this point. And so I was starting to gather up all of the things I had because I know there's like a couple things that I gave in the list to the the commission painters that I don't have on hand yet. But I was going through the list and I'm like, okay, here's what the army has. Uh, and I was going around collecting. As you know, I've moved over here. So things are kind of spread around. So I'm trying to find things and I'm like, oh, maybe I use that Sakaran battle tank for my <laughs> ultramarines. I think I used it for my ultramarines. Yeah. So I'm like, okay. Well, yeah, I'm digging around, and where are these items? And, and I open this drawer that I have out in the living room, mm -hmm. and it's full of Forge World oh, no. models. I mean, there's the Sakaran battle tank. Like, there's, you know, models that I forgot I had. Wow. To... Your house has Look, turned into like your house progress, has turned into the garbage. Out of hand. Yeah, <laughs> your, yeah, your house has turned into the garbage bins, and like in the UK, right? Yeah, yeah. Stuffed with <laughs> exactly. the dust bins. Yeah. The resin dustbins. And and I was like, oh, my God, how do you forget you have a $125 model sitting here? Yeah. yeah. So as I'm collecting this stuff, I'm going through my closet here and everything, and I'm realizing I've got the that game that came out with the two knights. Yep. Mm -hmm. They're still in there yep. on sprue. Yep. I've got Mol o Overkill. I've got, what's the other one that just came out? The Death Watch Overkill, and then right. the, the one after that, the, the, um, the one with the Eldar in it as well. Who knows? Oh, There's so many releases. Right. Whatever. Sure. I got that. I got two, <laughs> two Betrayal at Calths in there. All these things full. I've got Tyranids in boxes still in shrink wrap. Yeah. I've got models freaking everywhere. Because I'm like, oh, I want to do this project. You still oh, have I some Space Marine stuff in shrink wrap. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, next door I got some right. scouts and stuff. Those I actually am going to keep. So 
as I was going to this, Josh has recently been talking about how he's purging. He's selling a lot of yeah, stuff. Yeah, I've seen a lot of our, our and, buddies doing that. And then, but what he, he's not like getting out of it. He's just selling these things. So he could focus and realign. And using that money to fund the projects that he is working on yeah. and wants to focus on. And I, I've realized that I just need to focus. This is why the custodes are like a non starter for me. Yeah. Um, you know, and. Well, that's why I keep not looking at that DC Batman game. Yeah, don't look. By Noble Games, because it's. So. I mean, like even regarding the Death Watch, like Aaron was like, "Well, I'll take those Death Watch off your hand," and I'm like, "I, I actually want those because I'm going to replace the guys that I painted as Death Watch mm-hmm. for my Ultramarines." But beyond that, like, I need to get like I'm not going to get to these Tyranids, yeah, even in a year. I've got like a Hosperex and in, in you know, right. The hard for, thing for me is when you have those certain models that are metal. You know what I mean? That yeah. You, that you don't want to get rid of and, and then have to deal with, with fine cast or well, that's the really hard some, thing for me. In, honestly, in some cases, I'd rather deal with fine cast. Depends on the model. It depends so on the model. A, Absolutely. Yeah. But yeah. but I, I, immediately after this Lord of Change came out, I have an old Lord of Change still in shrink wrap. Yeah. That I yeah. bought specifically, you know. The Forge World one. No, 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 no. This is the oh, GW. the original Lord GW one. Yeah, oh. not the greater Lord of Change. Oh, oh. Yeah. so the idea, this this spawned an idea for yeah, a so little the gathering, idea, right? Thanks for pushing me along so yep. the idea was okay listen i have a lot of stuff that i I've, I've got to sell off i've got to sell off so i can then whatever i make off of that i'm going to focus that money back into the things that i'm actually working on right black legion for me thousand sons those are like my things that i really want to yeah. be doing that's a good idea so i said well you know i'm sure other people out there also have this stuff that are friends of ours mm-hmm. we have a fairly large group i invited these people to this group and said okay we're going to, at the end of April, have a barter and buy. And basically what the concept is, is you you go there looking to unload everything that you've brought. If there's somebody that's like, you know what, I want that because I'm working on a project that has those things. Uh, well, do you have something that you can trade to me that, you know, we can yeah. barter yep. and because I want something you have. And then, you know, and then anything that I don't trade away, I'm going to sell. Right. After that. And then just fund what I am working on. That's cool. Yeah. And and just fo- I need to focus a little bit. Like my combine board I'm not is bring- ridiculous. I'm not bringing my phone, my wallet, my. I'm bringing <laughs> nothing that can be used as a purchasing item. <laughs> yeah, because <'cause laughs> staying in the Adon car. Said, Adon oh. said this could be dangerous for me. I'm not going to bring any money. And then Josh goes, "I'm sure we can all accept PayPal." Yeah. <laughs> and somebody else goes, "Well, I have a square that I can use." <laughs> yeah, that was Gosh. Anthony. Just yeah, you're doomed. Me. You're doomed. No, but, I, I, you know what? It's, it, but it's, I think it's healthy. It's getting to the point where, like, I was getting my son's coming home for spring breaks. So I had to clean everything out of his room again, and I came across this box full of like hero clicks and mage knight stuff. Yeah, and I, I haven't looked inside the box for three, four years. I haven't even looked in it. Yeah, I open it up, and there's all these old hero clicks and, and mage knight stuff. The mage knight's not even a game that's being played anymore. Right. It's out mm. of print. I just dumped it all in the garbage can. I was like, you know what? I'm not going to take the time to try and figure out if it's sellable. Yeah. I'm not going to. I had looked on on um, eBay to see if if Mage Knight stuff had been selling about a year ago, and nobody was buying any of it. So right. I was like, hell with it. I, um, I, I, I just, I'm just getting rid of it. My buddy Dan, who who also attended the class, he said the same thing. He was sitting there working on models, and he looked. He always had this old space, you know, the Space Marine Terminator Captain, yeah, the metal one with him. I have him. Yeah. He had him primed for just year, like ten years plus, and he just got tired of looking at it and just threw it away. Oh, he's like, I'm, oh. I'm never going to get to this. He just threw it away. Yeah, and he's like, it felt really good. You know, it's weird. It can be cathartic uh, yeah. Yeah. sometimes to pare this stuff down. But there's a few projects I'll work on when we go to the barter and buy thing we'll see i mean don you know you probably have some fantasy chaos stuff i know that you're sitting oh yeah you're like oh i'll get rid of this i may take i got some a ton of, that. of fantasy stuff i think a lot of people in our group are going to be getting some good hookups on well yeah i mean some of us are getting into age of sigma right now and that's yeah. the army i'm doing so i mean I, I find that stuff maybe some chaos stuff and maybe some you know ultramarine stuff but yeah. i mean for the most part I think I'm it's like, good that you go in like with you know you got to set that goal yes, in your mind. Yeah. yeah, you go in with a plan. So you yeah. if it's outside There's of that blinders. plan, <laughs> you got to really stick to look. Yeah. I I love that, but I'm not going to do it. Yeah, right. You know, right. and so we should schedule it so it's like a week before the next Game Castle flea market. Uh, unfortunately, the next Game Castle flea market is actually the beginning of that month, but I'll be out of town. So. Oh, I was going to say because whatever we don't trade off, we can mm. then sell at the flea market. Yeah, yeah. Well. I got a ton of. I'm just gonna put it out on the curb, saying free. <laughs> oh God, this is brutal. That'll be good though. It'll be good to kind of clear. It hurts, but yeah. it will be good to focus. Clear out, yeah. And and 
because it's stuff I'm not playing with. Yeah. Demons, I'm keeping. Like I need lots of demons. I'm playing with both See, armies. I could I wouldn't be able to throw away a Space Marine captain because people are still using those. You could I mean it still has value, but like the Hero Clicks Mage Knight stuff, yeah. there was no value in them. Yeah. At well, all. I think for him too though, like the the size of that model compared, you know, the kind of scale, the is, scale, oh, yeah, the scale, scale increase. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. So anyway, uh okay, so that's it for hobby progress. Yep. I think we got a lot of this class. Again, I would just reiterate, thanks, Kat, and, and oh, yeah. thank you, Caleb. And uh, we really enjoyed ourselves, mm-hmm. and it opened my eyes, and I'm looking forward to seeing you guys at Adepticon. And those folks, you know, again, if you're looking for something like this, you can help get it started and get it set yep. up in your area. Yep. It is not that hard they to do. They will come to you. Yep, exactly. All right, we'll be right back. We're going to talk about the benefits of 40K in just a few minutes. Hey, this is Big Nasty B from Life Ever the Cover Safe, and I'm at a mall talking to strangers about Table War. Table War develops some of the most innovative products for the miniature wargaming and hobby industry. And I develop pictures. That's great. They develop things like the Fat Matt. Who's Matt, and why is he so fat? Well, first off, Matt is not a person. The Fat Matt is a tabletop gaming surface, and with over 40 different designs, Table War's Fat Matt has become a community standard. I got a Surface Pro, it's like 10 inches. By the way, I mean my friend Simbon. Do you know what that is? No, but I do want to tell you about the Table War Tower case line. Oh man, towers are so huge. Well, it's not that kind of tower. It's the original modular, all-in-one display storage and transport system for all your tabletop miniatures. Wow, you're really smart. What's your relationship status? Well, it's complicated, but you know what isn't complicated? Chili dogs. This is true, but also the macro mat. Oh, geez, not that guy again. The macro mat is a one of a kind, innovative photography backdrop, perfect for collectibles, hobby miniatures, and small works of art. It's durability, portability, and functionality in one inexpensive product. I wasn't paying attention to what you just said, but do you validate parking? No, I do not. But if you want more information, Head over to TableWar.com and check them out. Table War! All right, so we're back, and we are talking about the hidden benefits of Warhammer 40K. A lot of these honestly apply to any kind of miniature gaming or hobby-related thing in some ways. Mm-hmm. Yep. But, you know, a, a number, I guess it's a number of years ago now, we did a show on the hidden costs of 40K. Right. right? And that would add up everything from paints to time away from family to to those kinds of things. And it, as it was kind of going through my head, I thought, man, it's kind of a downer of a <laughs> of a topic. I mean, I don't think when it came out, it felt like a bummer topic, but I think right. it was like one of those things that you have to take these things into account, right? <clears throat> uh, and you know, so now we're kind of talking about the other side of that coin, which is what are the well, what are the benefits aside from just playing the game and having too many models that you have to take to a barter and buy number, number one on my list has to be just the friends i've made oh i think i mean strongest argument to be made right there yeah yeah i mean without a doubt like lifelong yeah you're my bros <laughs> thanks Justin. <laughs> it's yeah. okay um but I, I think that goes uh i, I don't want to say that goes without saying i think that that absolutely has to be said that one of the reasons we participate in this game is it is a social game. It is a socialization thing. Mm-hmm. And and that was kind of, I was looking for something bigger than just me and the one other person. I was ultimately looking to be involved in in a bigger community. And yeah, I've absolutely made, for, you and I, Justin, met as a result of this. Adon and I met as a result of yep. this game. We would not have met otherwise, yep. right? And I mean, my wife even brought up the fact that one of the things she really appreciated about just gaming in general, uh, 40k, because it's the largest community of gamers, was that you know I was interacting with people who are from completely different walks of life and different professions and different yeah. points of view from me. Because one of the things, especially in my old job, was you get really insular, and it's just like this, you know, this inside circle of people, and you never get outside of that. You don't really get an appreciation for people outside of that little circle of people, folks in the job. So um, that's one of the things she really loved about it was that I was, you know, playing with people who are software designers and teachers sure. and mm. all kinds of Students. other things. Students. Yeah, yeah, all kinds of stuff. So Yeah. But I mean, when you, when you think about it, you know, you said lifelong friends and then we kind of joked about it, but this show wouldn't exist 
obviously if I didn't play 40k, but it wouldn't exist if I hadn't met Jeff and I met Jeff as a result of 40k. Right. Um, you know, hi Jeff. Yeah. We'll be seeing you soon. <laughs> uh, but you know, I, I, I completely agree with you, uh, Justin. I think that, I think the strongest argument is that you, you develop something in common with other people that you can then talk about. And then you begin to learn about those other people. And look, I've met people that I, don't ever want to play with again, too. <laughs> but the reality is... Oh, yes. The root canals. Yeah, but the reality is, I mean, I've the, the benefits of the people that I've met and become friends with have far outweighed, oh, I had this really bad game this but one But you know time. what? There's a benefit to that, too, because um, getting through those things and how you deal with them and how you process them and how you bounce back from them, mm-hmm. um, especially if that's not a life skill you've developed yet, uh, there's a lot of value in that. Mm-hmm. And even for those of us who are a little longer in the tooth, mm-hmm. you know, reminding us that maybe we need to work on some areas of patience, patience. Or, <laughs> yeah. or understanding or yeah. right. or analysis. Whatever. I mean, without a doubt, there is a, a contingent that plays this game that in, in this hobby that we're involved in that struggles with social skills. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's just... That's just the world we're living in and in the world we're playing in. Um, and so, yeah, I think you're absolutely right. D- d- taking the time and taking stock to say, this guy obviously struggles. I need to learn to be patient with him or her. I need to uh, maybe help him or her to, to you know understand where I'm coming from. It does take a tremendous amount of skill. And and I think you can learn a lot from those skills. Well, and from being in the hobby for as long as we have, and I don't know if you have the experience, I definitely have, where I've met people and interacted with people many years ago who I've actually seen development through their skills in this area. Sure. Where, you know, maybe the first time or two that I interacted with them, I was thinking, oh, I mean, that was tedious. But now I have good games with them, and yeah. I enjoy See, that's really interesting. I haven't been. I haven't really ever had that experience. So. And and I think all oh, your you, people are just stuck. <laughs> well, no, I think, but yeah. I think there's a difference because you play a lot of Garage Hammer. You don't play as much at a store, right? Right. And so, and and for me, the experience of actually running the events at the store over the course of months and years, that's interesting. You see a lot of people cycle through, yeah, and you see people kind of come back. No, that makes sense. Um, and so that's been an interesting thing to watch and watch that progression. And and again, maybe it's because I'm older. I I have a kind of an interest in that development. Human development. You know, part I say of that. I mean, I guess I, I I saw that firsthand as well when I worked for Games Workshop. You know, when you you a kid comes in and you do his first intro game, and right. he gets into it, and at first he's kind of socially awkward, and then he gets more and more open. And yeah, yeah. yeah. I was going to ask because I mean, you've played the game honestly longer Long, than all of us, than, yeah. than us combined. Yeah, than Don and us combined. Uh-huh. And surely, it, it, I was going to say, when working for Games Workshop, you've you not only witness that, but also you, you've had to develop the skills to deal with those people mm-hmm. that are maybe difficult or socially awkward or problematic or that yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, and, and looking at yourself too, like inwardly looking yep. at yourself, I think that's another big benefit of what can I do better, you know, to be a better person on the tabletop yeah. and yeah. through... Through all this, this is sounding absolutely. like the conflict in forty k up. <laughs> yeah, it is a, it is a, it but, is a little but bit. No, but no, but it's a good it's a good point in terms of what, what are the it's a it's a benefit of the game. It's a benefit yeah. of playing the game. I'm gonna kind of we have a series of points here, but I want to yep. kind of bounce around because the flow of what we have typed is not necessarily where I want to go next. Which is as a result of some of these friendships you develop and that kind of thing, especially with the internet being an option now. Yeah, um, you can develop friendships remotely. Uh, and then travel places and meet these people that yeah. you haven't met before. Yeah. Yep. When I first started this hobby, I remember my buddy uh, Kentaro was saying, you know, my dad has a crap ton of miles because he flies to Japan and back right, right. all the time. And he says, we may be able to use those miles and f- get tickets to Chicago to go to Depticon. I was like, man, that sounds kind of far fetched. Yeah. You know, that's. It's right. pretty far. And look at him now. Yeah, and now I think we're going for a third or fourth time right. to Adepticon uh, in the, just a couple weeks. Traveling across the country to interact with people we met on the internet. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, but... Traveling's a big thing out of it, absolutely. And it, and it can... Sometimes we can get complacent a bit and, you know, not want to leave our shell, so it can kind of force you to see other parts of the world. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. I, mean, I, I got a trip to the UK from the hobby and... yeah. Got to go over. I, I know. I certainly did. Like, you definitely. I, have. I, I really had no desire to go to the UK outside of 
you know the hobby and now i mean i've gone and i'm glad i did i mean it, it was there but it wasn't it wasn't a strong well, it enough, wasn't for the weather right? it wasn't yeah it wasn't <laughs> yeah. a strong enough draw for me to suddenly go you know what honey let's go to london right. you know like there's a few other places on the list above there yeah well maybe not anymore yeah. you know because we have friends there now and we have we've traveled there and we enjoy it right um you know so i mean i'm going to chicago again we said uh i would like to go out to nova i haven't been out there you know so yeah i fully expect to do more traveling well there was a trip that we were going back east for a different reason and this is Long it was before this podcast, but I was listening to the D Six Generation, and they were talking about the store that they play at on a regular basis. And uh, I reached out to them and said, "Hey, I you know I'm going to be in the t- in in the area. Maybe we can get like a thousand point game. Oh yeah!" And I just I brought a bunch of Grey Knights because they you know I needed seventeen models or whatever it was at the time. Um, but again, you know, just meeting people based on the game. Yeah, you yeah. know, it was kind of cool. Yeah, and I I mean I think for us in particular, being a part of a larger community. And, uh, you know, this is uh, maybe not for everybody, but I mean, the podcast has allowed us to shape, I feel, some things. Um, and, and maybe it's just that we, people who, people who match our uh, values for the, for the game right. gravitate towards us because we have a voice in the community. Yeah, right. And so I've made the so posi- many The positivity friends. is infectious. Yeah, you know? yeah. And I mean, I've made so many friends as a result of the podcast, which I consider a part of the hobby, right? Yeah. I mean, I don't think of this as separate from the hobby at all. To me, this is a part of my hobby progress. Maybe I should claim that every week that we do. That's You're going to make James go apoplectic. It's <laughs> our biweekly group therapy. And on that note, I think for me, one of my personal also big like side effects of this whole thing is just that just that it's just therapy. It's like a, the, an amazing release. You know, I get so much kind of chi out of just going to my little man cave and just painting models. And it's, yeah, yeah just I agree. It's, cle- it, it clears your head. It It is a, it is a hobby that I have developed that I agree with you relaxes me mm-hmm. to, to paint. It gets me away from stress and general things. Like when I'm really in the zone painting, like I'm not thinking about any of the things stressing nope. me out anymore. It's you and that model and that airbrush. And prior to that, <laughs> and prior to that, it was video games, which yeah. I just don't feel like. As I've gotten older, like I still love playing video games, but I don't feel like I'm I'm producing anything. Right. Like when I'm yeah, painting absolutely something, something to show for your time. Yeah. Is, well, is you also know, you get that thirty seventh level, you know, dark elf and. <laughs> Please, dude. I had like a 65th level cleric in EverQuest that had his epic weapon. Where's that epic weapon now? Yeah. Do you know how many hours we camped to get that stupid epic weapon? <laughs> like overnight with call lists. But you, but you produced it. I mean, something you produced. I've, yeah. Where is it now? I'm kidding. I can't even log I'm into that kidding. account. I don't even remember what it was. I'm kidding. So that my point, you're hitting it. You're actually joking, yeah. but you're, you're nailing That's it the on point. the head, right. which is, you know, now I have model i mean people come over and then they're like what what's this and and i'll say well yeah this is a game i play you know well, what's it about how deep you want me to go yeah, <laughs> yeah <exactly. right. laughs> and i always have to like i'm always i approach it in layers like i'll yeah. say look it's a game it's played on table yep. use tape yep. measure mo- armies fight really armies. cool models yep. cool story been around I, 30 years you painted all this stuff Boom, yep done yep. well except for all those things that i commissioned painted but yes yeah you know and then they'll say uh oh okay well how does it play? And usually I give them a gut check at that point. How much do you really want to know? <laughs> Honestly, really when, I, know when I answer that, I just say, you move them around with tape measures and you roll dice. Yeah. And there's rules. Yep. Simple. Yep. And that, that's where I start. And then they go, well, how does this look? We, yep. I could go on. We could be here for time. a while. Yeah. Um, it, I find it interesting. And I, and you know, maybe do you listen to podcasts. Maybe it's because <laughs> we're in uh, a different part of the country but and some of it's our age but i've never shied away from my geek hobby stuff yeah i've never shied away from people say oh what do you do i said i play dungeons and dragons with my friends you know and, oh that's funny sure if you think so you know whatever yeah, um it's I've, such a huge part of our lives you know work, it's, it's like it's denying yourself to an extent you know everybody knows i play this game at work like i don't hide it yeah and but it's interesting i've heard people say oh, oh yeah. i would i would legitimately be Discriminated is the wrong word, but discriminated ostracized. Against, yeah, ostracized. If yeah. people knew I played this, and I'm like, I, I was, I was pretty on the down low, especially when I was working at the at work? department. Really? Yeah, 
Not not anymore, huh. but I was then. Yeah, that's interesting. I remember being being younger, like in high school. You know, I'll, you worried about that? Oh, absolutely. As, as a younger kid, I could see it. Like I had a friend, we would play D and D, and he would worry about that. Yeah. But I was always like, I'm. I don't see what the problem is. I said I'm going to play. And especially this. If, if a girl were to come over, it was like, huh? When I mean, you're at that yeah. age, you know. Yeah. No, I, that's absolutely a thing. It is. It still is. Absolutely. It's so interesting to me. Like I've never bowed to that, and I think I've been. You have a stronger sense of self, my friend. I mean, yeah, I, I, look, we're you, talking about you when I was both two 13, indiv- you, 14, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, right. but, I mean, you were both two individuals who were very well grounded. That, that is, that is a load of hooey. But, you know, even when I was a military police officer, like we'd play D and D all the time. Well, the, uh, that's, it's amazingly large in the military. Yeah. Gaming now. Yeah. Well, I think too, like this day and age being a, a geek, so to speak, is a little more, uh, yeah. socially acceptable. Yeah. acceptable. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. Yeah. But I think, again, I think that's, our perception in here, I am sure that there are places where it, it is problematic. Oh, yeah. Right? I mean, heck, we're talking about demons and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. How do you think that go over in Mormon community in Utah? Probably not so hot, right? <laughs> so anyway, I mean, you know, I, I think the socialization aspect of it, without a doubt, has been the strongest uh, benefit that I have received from this. I've made so many friends. You know, I've I've communicated with people that I've, I've never thought... Right. I would ever communicate with. It's been fantastic. On the on the kind of more hard skill side, like I used to play D and D. I w- could paint models, D and D miniatures, and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. My painting is well beyond the level that I ever painted that stuff at yeah. at this yeah. point. Especially taking this airbrush class that we absolutely just, yeah, right. Well, just the ongoing improvement of hobby skills <laughs> that actually translates over to other parts of your life too. Yeah. I mean, airbrushing the airbrushing that we learn. You can go rent a house painting airbrush yeah. at Cresco and use the same kind of techniques. Paint your house. I mean, there's yeah. Like I find myself, uh, I'm, I'm going to sit- shade this corner of the house. Well, I mean, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that panel. I mean, I'll find myself sitting on my couch. I'll be looking at my drapes. Like, man, that color is just off. Yeah, the know, color the theory chi stuff. Of, no, yeah, I really haven't, but oh. <laughs> maybe one day. Well, I, you know what though? That it does has, has helped me chopping for stuff for my wife. Yeah. You know, thinking about things, oh, she's got this in her closet. This color would go well with that. I mean, 20 years ago, I wouldn't have done that. Yeah. You know, uh, or at least not to the same extent of being able to think about how those colors go together or that that kind of stuff, the color theory stuff. Um, I mean... uh, Organizational skills, if you want to go down that route. For sure. Well, and just, and, you know, the How hobby many people th- know about compound boards now that didn't know about compound boards before? I mean, I, I always find myself on the lookout for those little plastic containers. Like, you can never have enough of those things. Oh, yeah. little, pl- little Plano boxes. Yeah, for bits um, and whatever. I was in, we were in uh, my in law's place in Arizona, and there was one of their little family heirloom porcelain things that got broken. And, and my mother in law's like, you do stuff with glue, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I fixed it for yeah. him, you know? I had to like, do a couple of those. Yep. Yeah. I mean, uh, you raised the interesting point, Adon, about about events and stuff. I mean, it has helped you develop skills that you probably already had as a result of your previous role, but helped develop skills for organizing people to do oh, yeah. things. I know that, you know, organizing events and that kind of thing that I have done has directly translated yeah. into, you know, things that I do at work mm-hmm. uh, to get people moving, uh, setting up vacations for people, that kind of stuff. When we do group type stuff, right. like all of that that I learned through. Uh, you know, basically think of all the skills, getting, getting events running and that kind of thing. Think of all the skills Matt Weeks has developed over the oh, last dude, 13 that guy, years. I don't know how years. he does it. Like <laughs> running Adepticon, that has got to yeah. be, you know, he and Hank have got to yeah. be the most patient guys in the well, world. Well, I mean, even uh, Reese and Frankie and those guys. Yeah. Oh, man. Look yeah. at the first uh, BAO. Oh yeah, yeah, and now look it's at LVO now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, back from the they, from the barn. They, they have the, they have learned awesome. so much. Sure. You can see, you can just watch the development. Yeah, sure. LVO was Absolutely. an awesome event. Absolutely, I've I've learned a lot about businesses because I've been uniquely yeah. involved with some businesses that uh, you know concepts and things that I never would have thought of. Yep. But I think the community organization aspect is a really really uh, interesting skill that I've 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 honed. Right. Doing things uh, for forty k. In addition, doing the podcast and helping orchestrate discussions and and you know uh, moderate those kind of things have helped me at work where i moderate meetings and that mm, kind of stuff yeah. and getting your flaky co-host to show let, up let's stay on topic <laughs> that know? was once and i was out of line <laughs> no 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 <laughs> both of us man he's like hurting it happens, carl dude, life life happens right but yeah. but 
I have absolutely run conference calls where I have used the skills that I've developed doing a podcast to run the conference call yeah. and keep things moving along. Sacrifices yeah. must be made for the Astronomicon. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Um, Don, uh, you added here renewed interest in history. Yeah, I mean, and that goes not just with this um, hobby, but but with uh, like bolt action and other hobbies yeah. like that. When I was in high school, I was history was like the last class I was interested in. I was so bored with history. And uh, getting involved with with gaming really had sparked. You know, you end up going down these rabbit holes. You're, I'm going to do an army. I'm going to do, you know, oh, I want to do a Marine Corps army from Second World War. Well, let's find out a little bit more about them. And you end up learning all this stuff that you wouldn't. At least for me, I didn't know, and find out about all these these aspects of history. Right, uh, and it's the same thing with 40k. I mean, when I first got into this, I knew there was all this backstory. I knew there was all this lore, but I didn't. You know, it's like, oh yeah, whatever. I, I like the lo- way those models look. Yeah, right, right. But the more I got into it, every it was like everything you're, you're opening an, another chapter of stuff, and and it's like, oh, I like these guys. Oh, who, who are these female? fighters right, or their right. sisters of battle and you start reading about them and you start reading about black templars and you just start learning more and more and more right, about stuff right. I, I think i completely agree one of the cool things about yes this is like a future history we joke about right. that and reading some of the books especially the forge world black yeah. books feel like reading history books but the other thing it's done is i have gone and read a lot about like World War One, World yep. War Two, yep. because you can develop missions based off of actual things that yep. occurred. Well, and a lot of things in in forty k are based on historical stuff. Right, right. I mean, they just pull it right out of history. Oh yeah, yeah. And I so. mean, if you read the original Siege of Rax, I mean, it reads like World War One. Yeah, and the guy who wrote it was a huge World War One fan. So right, that's right. of course right. why it was, you know, it's all trench warfare and yeah. chemical weapons. And but like, okay, like the episode we did about the Necrons <laughs> and we, they talked about the Pharos, right? The, yep. That the, that the Scythes, uh, Emperor's... Size of the Emperor. Scythe of the Emperor were protecting. Well, when we were preparing for that show, I'm reading about that and I found out that it was one of the seven ancient wonders of the world where that, that word came from, that the, the beacon... The idea oh. of that beacon. So I ended up reading a bunch about the seven ancient wonders of the world huh. because yeah. I'm doing research for a 40k. Yeah, there's a lot of that. I mean, a lot of their their stories have been taken from. Yeah. Oh, sure. So. I mean, if you look at Horus Heresy itself, I mean, it, it, I was just talking with Kat and Caleb about this. I mean, it is effectively uh, words and names pulled from history, but it is effectively like the war in heaven. Right. Is mm-hmm. is I mean, they've even referred to it as as much. Right. You know, you have the angels of death fighting and the humans are really just, you know, kind of caught in the crossfire. Right. But it, it's effectively Christianity kind of retold right. in some ways. So, I mean, it's it's fascinating, actually. And then going and seeing where those things fundamentally came from. Right. It offers some interest, too. I, I would say um, I have read like I've always been a pretty voracious reader in general, but I have read way more than even I typically would because I just plow through black library books. Yeah, yeah. well, I'm not a voracious reader, but it has caused me to do a lot more reading and research. Than yeah, I, I just, never would have... words, I just, <laughs> so, yeah. they're, diff- they're hard. They are. You know? I'm not making fun of you about that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've I've read, you know, quite a few of the books myself. and yeah. not, not nearly as many as you have, but... Yeah, I mean... I've you and me together haven't library. read as many as he has. No, not at all. Yeah, I don't know... Uh, what it is. And I mean, it's been interesting to like, I, when I first started the hobby, you know, I was struggling to find the books to read. Like I would blast through them and then I'd be like, I've, I've read that one. I've already read all that. Um, and, and now it's like, you can't keep up no. with, yeah. I cannot keep up with the pace. Yeah, if you can't keep up, we're just, we're yeah, doomed. We're doomed. Yeah. yeah. So now you really have to spot pick what you want to read. Yeah. One kind of silly benefit. And I, I kind of embarrassed admitting this, but the hobby helps me go to bed at night. How so? Excuse me? <laughs> it actually helps me fall asleep. Like I will ne- like think about lists in my head. And I've actually talked to some friends that like list do the same thing. Puts me to sleep too. I'll list build or <laughs> guaranteed I'm going to be going to bed tonight thinking about that airbrush, you know, thinking about what oh, yeah. might not. And, yeah. you know, it just, it, it's, it's relaxing. Like, it's well, like counting it's relaxing. sheep, you know, yeah. It allows you to disconnect from the other stresses of life mm-hmm. and relax. Yeah. It's kind of cool. And, uh, you know, I think one of the last things we've kind of got on our, on our bullet pointed list here is really about critical thinking. Yeah. And about, you know, um, 
the mechanics of the game. Yeah. Certainly having to adapt quickly have, to yeah. changing yeah. circumstances. Mentally, being able to shift, you know, your focus, it helps uh with with tactical thinking. Yeah. Uh, strategic, strategic thinking, thinking for sure. Uh, the list building thing really speaks to the strategic aspect of it. But I mean, you did you just say strategery? No, the strategic aspect. <laughs> strategery. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, those those are skills. It 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 sounds silly to say that they transpose themselves into real life, but they actually do. When you yeah. practice these kind of mental exercises over and over again, it literally builds the synapses in your brain that allow you to yeah. focus and think in that direction. Yep. And so those things i mean i think there's honestly been studies that have shown board gaming and that kind of thing yeah. help you develop critical thinking skills and help you develop um you know the the types of interaction skills that you need to be able to be flexible and, and think your way through problems well and i'll give you a, an example kind of um the so 40k uh, and some of the other games that i play are more you know squad level company level platoon level right games uh, it, which is not typically the way that I would think about things when I was doing my doing my job. Um, I always thought about things in terms of team level stuff, right, and squad level stuff. And um, when I was playing Infinity for the first time, I was kicking butt because I was using small unit tactics, and that game was only like eight to ten models. Yeah. So I was thinking about it like like my entry team, and so I would plan out the game that way. Yeah. And it was a it was because it was right in my wheelhouse. Right. And so 40K is kind of cool because it forced me to kind of pull back and think about things on a broader scale and moving m multiple units around and thinking about what multiple, mm. you know. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, it, it was very interesting. And, you know, because later in my career, I was a lieutenant running larger squads of stuff at events and demonstrations and stuff like that. And this, the game helped me for that, with that. That's really interesting. Yeah. Huh. Hand-eye coordination too, big time. You think from well, the painting, hobbying, from yeah. The from the hobbying aspect. and everything, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, being able to follow instructions. Yep. Right, which sounds really stupid. Mm -hmm. but Some I, better than others. But I can't. <laughs> dry fitting. Yeah. Hey, uh, but, hey, on that note, Dan, my buddy Dan, gave this guy kudos because <laughs> he's like, man, you guys bust his chops a lot for that. But he glued them all together. He didn't dry fit it, and he messed it all up. He had to boil it down and Listen, do all kinds of crazy stuff. So. I am not opposed to dry fitting, even dry fitting two and three times, and then saying, okay, yes, I especially a Forge World model. I know this thing goes together, but at a certain point, <laughs> you gotta glue it. You gotta, you gotta glue the model you pull together. The trigger, it's you like when we were sitting in that airbrush class. You know, you can only stare at that model for so long. You gotta pull the trigger. Not gonna get on there itself. You gotta pull the trigger. <laughs> All right. You gotta pull the trigger. <laughs> um, yeah, you, know, you know we say it with love. Well, you we know it's care. funny because you were talking about how the hobby. Uh, Helps you go to sleep, helps you relax. Mm -hmm. It's the opposite for me, actually. It stresses you it's out. The painting part of it stresses, the hobby part of it stresses me. But out. do you but, think, like after these classes, like is that? Oh yeah, a lot more confidence. Yeah, but I think again, one of the benefits of this game, one of the benefits of 40k for me is I've developed a lot of skills that I didn't have before, and it forced me to have patience with that kind of eye to hand coordination stuff, right? yeah. and it forced me to to think about moving past obstacles and barriers in the way that I approach problems, and so you know. I, it's it's a benefit of the game. Yeah. Going back to the following instructions thing, though, I mean, as stupid as that sounds, look, when you manage large teams of people like yeah, I do, right, and you have somebody that can't follow instructions, yeah, it is incredibly evident that they have a problem and they can't function, and right. and so people, you know, if you can assemble a model, you can follow instructions, whether they're verbally given or written out for you or whatever. Right. But not everybody has that skill. And and being able to go through and assemble something like that is a skill that will help, yeah. help you in the future. So Especially the older Forge World models that had no instructions. Exactly. Look <laughs> at these pictures and interpret that. And that's yeah. not, not even joking. That is actually, yep. you know, you're having to take a leap of logic yep. and be able to develop that. Now, of course, the... They I practically really, assemble themselves now. <laughs> I really like the directions they put in there now. With oh, they're the color, beautiful. The color-coded directions. And, oh, yeah. they're amazing. Yeah, they're, they've gone... You know, when they're I think so much about better. how far the hobby has come in just the time that I've been playing, yeah, it's a tremendous leap. In. Put yourself in my shoes, man, from oh, the lead, oh, lead, mini, lead mini days and that first yeah. Space oh, Marine box to now it's just unreal. They used to have to carve their own dice back yeah, when he started. Seriously. Yeah. Dreadnoughts were on square bases. What? <laughs> <laughs> Made out of rocks. <laughs> it's weird. You're like the youngest guy here, yet you're the oldest. <laughs> the oldest gamer. Guy. Guy. 
<laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so I, I think that kind of sums it up, right? I mean, there's a lot of great things that come out of this hobby. Obviously, the social aspect of it for me is the, the high point. And I'm sure the thread on the forums will end up with a whole bunch of stuff that we didn't cover. Oh, for yeah. sure. Yeah, We're, we're great, all a little sleepy, too, right It's now. a great topic oh. to think about, though. I mean, it, for people who... You know, when you're thinking about, why am I spending all this time and money doing this? Think mm. about it. There's a lot of benefits that come from this. It's not just right. the money the, flushed. Yeah. yeah. No, but it's not just the nice looking model on the table and having having a good time with someone across the table. Or There's crushing a lot the of, opponent across from you. Right. Uh, and hearing the lamentation of that. <laughs> uh, but, but there's a lot of other benefits. And, and if you take a minute to think about it. This is why I think hobbies in general are important. More than golf. It, it, and... <laughs> Well, I mean, even look, I mean, and taking a broader aspect of it, it's just a hobby, right? Yeah. A lot of people say that. And a lot of people say, oh, it's an expensive hobby. And we can go in forever about how other hobbies are very expensive, too. Yeah. I just bought scuba gear, and that's, oh, God. Tell you, that's expensive. So, <clears throat> but the but the reality is, it's I think it's important for people to have hobbies. Mm. Uh, the, the last point I wanted to make is really around relationships and that kind of thing. And it is important for you know, you and your partner, whatever, whoever that partner is to have things that are separate from each other as well. Most definitely. And, and this is, you know, the shell does play 40 K, but rarely. And yeah. this is really kind it's of more, your, it's more your deal. Yeah. And she sure. does it because she enjoys being with me, you know, yeah. but it's not a, it's not a driving not factor a passion for her. For her right? right. So, you know, it is important. She asks, oh, how did the painting thing go? And I want right. to know how that went and, and what you learn. And, and let me see what came out of it because she's genuinely interested. Now we have conversation about that. Right. I got time to myself and she got time to herself. Yeah. And now we come together. And very, come very, together. very important. Yep. And that. Yeah. So, I mean, just in general, having a hobby, I think, is a tremendously beneficial thing to anybody's life. You have to keep it in balance. Right. Not. Yeah. Wind yeah. Up with we closets. have a whole episode. Closets on full of. <laughs> We have an episode on that stuff, yeah. but yeah, we do. In fact, our wives came on yep. and talked about yep. about it. But I think having a hobby is very important, and I think this is a great hobby to have for the reasons we've listed before. So we're gonna come right back. We're gonna close out the show. Uh, we'll be right back. Join the boys over at Sprue Hammer, centrally isolated for access to several Western and Central Kentucky and Western Tennessee gaming groups. They're dedicated to helping new players learn every aspect of 40K and gaming in general. Check out their blog with reviews, tutorials, and general information for beginning and experienced players. And you can find them on Facebook for gaming days and information, and also at sprewhammer.com. All right, so thank you for joining us for episode 149 of the Independent Characters. A bit of a different approach this episode, so I'll be kind of curious to see how it how it plays with people. Yeah. Um, but it, I think it was an exciting week for us. Yeah, we're a little burnt today. Too. We're, we're exhausted <laughs> recording this, so yep. bear with us. Uh, we do have, uh, Adon and I do have, uh, uh, not Prospero Burns, uh, Inferno. Uh, Inferno. The Inferno? <laughs> yeah. Book seven Book of Horus Heresy. Do you guys still hear the compressors? In hand, yes. Yeah. Yes, it's like when you're on a ship and you can still feel like the, <laughs> the wave. Yeah. yeah. Um, we have Book seven of Inferno, so yep. we're starting to, go through that we're probably going to cover that coming in april so for everybody who keeps asking when we're going to cover book yeah. seven it looks like two episodes april. yeah and it'll cover two episodes yep. it'll be lengthy so uh expect that um again i want to mention uh terrace at geek nation tours and the U uh, minis in the uk tour go to geeknationtours.com take a look and sign up for that event if yeah, you're i think interested their gen con one's just about sold out yeah i mean he sells out of of these generally pretty quickly i think there was yeah. i think some people over the holidays dropped out so there's right. some still some openings but you definitely gonna want to take a look and you know i think by the time we go to record next episode we'll be at adepticon right so it's going to be delayed just a little bit again because we'll be at adepticon yeah. but i'm looking forward to talking to or maybe some... we can record some stuff there yeah i don't want to bring a bunch of... i have like a portable <laughs> recording thing but i yeah i really just want to go and have fun yeah um Last thing I wanted to mention was uh, I did speak to the guys who are developing uh, the game uh, Inquisitor, oh, the yeah. video game. Uh, I did a, an interview with them. Unfortunately, when I went to save the file, it's corrupted. Like, it's not working correctly, and there's mm. the noise is just awful. I'm going to try to reconnect with them and, and maybe do that interview again. 
But that game is looking very interesting. And I've been playing through the alpha build of it. Uh Uh, And it's obviously in an alpha stage. I mean, they're they're very upfront about that. But I think it has some potential. It looks Um, pretty cool. There's a lot of like um, battlefield kind of damage. Yeah, it's kind of a, a Diablo type game. Yeah. Uh, but you're an inquisitor, and yeah, you can destroy terrain and that kind of stuff. But cool. It, it's got some pretty cool stuff in it so far. So um, I, I apologize to those guys. I was trying to to uh, see if I could fix the file, but there's no helping it at this point. So death we'll, mask. We'll have that again. No, oh, that was That's the, the other <laughs> box that has the, the other thing elder. we didn't talk about because we were so tired was the games played, and you have some things that you want to talk about, Don. But we'll we'll, we'll cover that next, that next episode. Yeah. There you go. Uh, so, I mean, you guys have anything else you want to throw out there before we kind of close out? You know, I'm just excited to really get more airbrushing in. Yeah, me yeah. too. Yeah. You'd think after painting for like 20 hours in two days, you, you wouldn't. But... <laughs> I will say I need a break. Yeah. But when I come back, I'm, I've got some plans. So, oh, yeah. Super. So much more confidence. So, yep. yeah. And I think the other thing it's going to help me do is look at, look at pictures of models that have been done in C. Okay, mm, I understand yeah. how this was done. Do I want to replicate that effect or, or this yeah, effect? So. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. All right, well then, coming to you from the Astronomicon, where purchases are always progress. You always dry fit your models. And Venom's always come in nines. This is Carl. This is Don. And this is Justin. Have a great evening. Bye-bye. This episode of The Independent Characters is protected by the Creative Commons license. If you have further questions as to its use, you can find information on the front page at theindependentcharacters.com.